This is what the fans were waiting for. The field two by two as they get ready to get underway from Talladega Super Speedway. Organization it seems already for Team Penske. The two of Brad Keselowski leaves a little gap. The 22 of Joe Logano moves down in line. They are the fourth and fifth cars on the bottom lane. We see the 12 just above that 22. So those three Team Penske cars very close to each other, not all in line right now. Car out three wide up at the front. Looks like the 20 of Christopher Bell, hard to tell from that angle. Yes, it is the 20. He's outside the 19 of Truex. He's going to be losing spots with no help behind him. I think Keselowski in that two car, he was trying to drag back to get the 12 in front of him, but there was no push to the 12. He didn't have enough speed to take advantage of it. Look how quickly that second line has fallen back. It was Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch that were on the front row, but the 11 already has dropped back almost to seventh or eighth. With well, Pinsky cars jumping that outside line, Denny likes to see that. He's going to go up there and get behind that two car, Brad Keselowski. They're going to start moving forward again. On that first start of the race, you don't want to do anything that's going to cost you a lot of spots, like you saw Christopher Bell jump out of line, lost a ton of spots. Denny was falling back. Stayed cool, held his position. Now he's pushing these Penske cars into the lead. You see the 18 dropping back to the bumper of the nine of Chase Elliott on that inside line. Penske cars are going to stay up on the high line as now the 18 gets a little bit of a run. We're going to talk agendas all day long. The agendas for the playoff guys. Do you risk it? Go up there, try to score stage points. If you're not a playoff driver, do you risk getting in the mix early, or do you wait to see if the big accident comes? Big push from Chase Elliott sends the 18 car up the inside of Joey Logano. Now the momentum again from the outside. Denny Hamlin still glued to the back bumper of the two car off into turn one. Joey's going to get in front of that line. He feels like that's where the energy's at. They're teamed up pretty good on the bottom, though, guys. I want to remind you that double yellow line, that is out of bounds. You are not allowed to improve your position below that double yellow line. So they'll want to stay above that. And outside lane now three wide. William Byron saw a little bit of push coming from Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Jumped up to be the leader of that outside line. Three wides. Kyle Busch gets back out front. Now we see the 24 of William Byron. He's up on that high line. to see if this top lane with William Byron can work. Kurt Busch jumps out in front of the 24, thinking there might be some momentum there. Yeah. Now Blaney's going to go up there and try to either control that outside line and slow them down. Now he's on the outside of Denny Hamlin. He's committed to that third groove. They're just simply trying to be the first guy in the line they think has forward momentum. So Ryan Blaney jumps at that outside. This is oh. why. See that big push coming. Logano with a block. Yeah, we also saw Denny Hamlin get a little bit nervous there as he had a big shove from just behind him in the 19 of Martin Trex Jr. Yeah, they all had to get out of the gas there, Rick, and you see the speed and the pace they're losing, positions being lost. See, Matty D, he now jumped up behind Logano. Logano lost Blaney and all of that. When the two got in the middle, it just slowed the energy down from that pack, and that separated the 12 and the 22. So now you have four Penske's in a line. Wood Brothers car is a teammate with Team Penske. So you have four of them lined up. That's exactly what they wanted to do. So that's teams. What about manufacturers? How easy is it to find the other Fords out there and get together and work together? It's, it's a huge effort now, Rick. It's going to be inter interesting to see as these stages come to the end how they stay put together because the, there's a lot of drivers in this race that need stage points. And there's others that don't. There's others that are here only to win. They're not in the playoffs anymore. And those relationships will get, they'll get splintered as this race goes on. Denny Hamlin to the top there, either by decision to get out of that lead draft. It, he's got that security blanket. He won a week ago at Las Vegas. He doesn't have to be up front leading this race. He doesn't have to have great points today. He's automatically on to the next round. And so we see Denny Hamlin falling back out of the big pack here. This is the thing we've seen Denny do before, where he'll go back to the back of the field and ride around and watch everybody wreck themselves out of this race and go up there and steal the win late. Denny's teammate, 
Kyle Busch that's up front on that inside line. He has Chase Elliott right behind him. Kyle Larson has been quiet right there in third, but staying right on the double yellow line as well. And Harvick, he left that inside line, jumped up to the top. You mentioned manufacturers, Rick. That puts a lot of forwards in that outside line. Now, Kevin Harvick in that four car, he is the someone that needs stage points. Came here below the cut line. He's going to try to get posi track position and never give it up. And a big run here. Logano in that Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. We saw the view out the front windshield to the four of Kevin Harvick. Harvick now leading at Talladega. That inside line's coming fast, though. They've got great help, and they're very tight together. Good momentum. Harvick does not go down there and block that run. He stays committed to the outside line, hoping to get more help from the Fords behind him. A little bit of movement on that 18 car as he's getting a hard push from the nine of Chase Elliott. Good organization in the outside line. Matt Benedetto back there behind the 22. We see him up front at this race a lot. It's not a mistake. It's not a fluke. He's really good at the plate races. And Joey Logano doing a great job pushing Kevin Harvick. Offset his car to the right. You can push on that rear bumper on the right side of that car. You don't want to push on the left in a corner. You can spin the guy out. You push him on the right. It's much safer. Hart stays in this middle groove. He could go down and get in front of that 18, but he sees the momentum on the outside. Getting help from his spotter as well to know what line's coming, where the energy's going to come. Joe Logano is great at pushing as well at these racetracks. Can be a little aggressive at times. You see right now these first three Fords are out front. If they could get Keselowski in that fifth one, then they could pick whatever lane they wanted. Harvick leading at Talladega. New to NASCAR as you watch today's race, follow along on Twitter at NASCAR Nation for a one on one type breakdown of what's happening on the track. We'll explain key terms you hear on the broadcast and we can answer your questions. Day zero coverage brought to you by Geico. As we look down, a big aggressive move out of Matt DiBenedetto in the 21. He goes to the low line. 
And challenging for the lead here at Talladega now as Joey Logano gets a good run. He'll get right on the back bumper of Kevin Harvick, who's out front. Yeah, pretty interesting move right there by two Ford drivers. Matt Benedetto leading the race right now. Decided not to keep playing with the Ford. Said, I want to lead this race. I'm going to take care of myself. Eric Almarola, same thing. Neither one of those guys are in the playoffs. They dropped off of the other Fords to lead the race. A little bit surprised by Eric Almarola not to get out of that line of Fords he was in, but not surprised by Matt DiBenedetto, who's trying to race for a job. No guarantees where he's going to be next year. No guarantees on what manufacturer he's going to drive for. He's racing for himself today. Parker. Well, Dale, one of the interesting things here as we see these Fords really control this race is how they got there. If you go a couple laps back, you saw the 22 push the four of Kevin Harvick there all the way through the corners, almost tandeming like we used to see a couple years ago. Remember with this package change that we had going to the July Daytona, or August Daytona, excuse me, these cars were slowed down. A lot of people wondered, could you do it? We didn't quite see it at Daytona, but coming here to Talladega, a bigger track, we thought we might see it, and we thought we might see it out of the Fords, which have a flusher, flatter front nose that allows that. I think we're definitely seeing that tandem being able to be used through the corners a little bit, Marty. Boy, Parker, you see the Fords working so well together there. Kevin Harvick shot to the lead for just a moment in front of the 21 of Matt Benedetto. The Chevys, though, you see them kind of working with everybody. CV always had a terrific analogy. It's like making a dinner reservation for 16 versus a dinner reservation for four. The Chevy plan has really changed. They will all pit together, just like the Fords will. But when it comes to on track, they are told, listen, you do not have to work with Chevys necessarily. Yes, help your other teammates if you can, your other Chevys cars but you don't have to do that because they want to avoid 10 cars in a pack together that's when a big wreck can take everybody out and I like that plan Marty I think the value of teammates is the most under green flag pit stops on and off pit road and being organized but on the racetrack Dale Jeff I want you to kind of go out there and understand there are cars if it was a coin flip but don't worry about other cars worry about yourself yeah I need to be able to make moves when I need to make them now I loved working with teammates as long as they wanted to do what I was doing <laughs> See that, so that, that, that means you wanted them working with you. That's right. You're right. I got you. Yeah. That was nice. What's interesting to me about the, the Ford situation we talked about is you've got one four on the inside, one four on the outside. So what does that mean? If you're Kevin Harvick, you're Joey Logano, if, if you're any of those other Ford guys, you now know, hey, I can't trust Matt Benedetto, right? He's going to be on his own agenda. And I'm not saying that's wrong. But if you go into the race expecting that the guy is going to be working with you and he doesn't early in the race, and you immediately say, okay, crossing him off my list. I no longer can trust him. See, Joey Logano's heart rate north of 130 in drivers. I've never raced around Talladega, but it seems to be not very physical. It seems to be all of this heart rate is from the adrenaline and the, and the, the nerves as you race in the pack. You guessed it. It's the mental strain and the mental anxiety, the fear of being in that pack three wide, just where Joey is, right in the middle of it. He's in the worst possible place to be in that pack right now, and his heart rate shows that. When you mention the mental strain, when you see activity strain 6.9, similar to lifting, lifting weights, that goes from zero to 21 and continue to climb all day long. So already a lot of effort, only 16 laps into the race, now over seven. So trying to control that, keep yourself as calm, keep breathing, keep that heart rate low, can't help a driver in his fatigue. And remember, this race will go for three hours, so at least three hours. As we saw the 23 of Bubba Wallace, not a surprise that he was up front. He's had great success on super speedways. His best career finish is on super speedways, especially at Daytona. Two guys that haven't had great success are at the front of this field. Kyle Larson, admittedly not a big fan of, of this type of racing. And Mark Trix Jr., I think he's a good a good plate racer, a good restricted plate racer, but he wrecks a lot, has terrible luck, brakes, car, all kinds of things have happened to Martin to not allow him to get the win. Dave. Checking in on the situation for Christopher Bell. Remember coming in, he's 25 below the cut line, 12th and last among playoff drivers. And he told us this week, we've got nothing to lose. We buried ourselves with a self-inflicted pit road wound at Vegas and finishing 24th. So what about today? He said, we're going to be in it for stage points all day. So what's he doing currently 20th? Well, he's doing that. He's trying to find his way back to the front after starting 12th, got shuffled back to 27th. He's been working with anybody he can find. This would be a great one to work with right here, his teammate Kyle Bush as he needs to move that 20 car forward and finish this stage in the points. Marty? 
Dave, a moment ago, William Byron was running up here in this front of this pack, but he has fallen to the back, and that was by intent when he was on the top line. Temperature shot up to close to 300, moved down to the bottom. They went down to 275, but they're not coming down any further. So he dropped to the back of this pack, trying to get some clean air to the nose of that colorful number 24 car there in the back of the pack. So, Steve, at what point do you worry about temperatures, but do you take tape off? Is that, is that an option on this first stop to cool that 24 down? Well, if you have tape on it, you can remove it. But I think at this point, it's about William learning where he can and can't run. Uh, it's easy to cool a car in clean air. I would have to ask William, hey, is this too much effort to keep this car cool? Do I need to help you out? And let him tell me if he can move around and manage it. Points always moving. You see those on the left. Everyone fighting for points here in stage one. Grab an ice cold Coke and buckle up. You're watching NASCAR on NBC. And it's NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. The Yellowwood 500 from Talladega Super Speedway. Up front right now is Cole Custer in the 41. And teammate Kevin Harvick just behind him. Fords are working on the bottom line. And as we went to break, we saw the Chevrolets had made the outside line work with some Toyotas up there. And now the Fords flexing their muscle down on the bottom of the racetrack. Yeah, we thought that high line was going to be where everybody went. Cole Custer dives down in front of his teammate, Kevin Harvick, and now this bottom is dominant again. We saw the same thing in the Xfinity race. We, we, we know the drivers all kind of like to get to the top and ride around and just make laps to get to the end of this race. Didn't happen in the Xfinity race. Seems to be the same situation here where the bottom may be the best place to be. And Junior, we're seeing two wide, three wide racing as we're getting close to, to, three to go. close to the competition. Caution, that was the 22 of Logano. Coleman Presley, the spotter wide. for Joey Logano. One clear, they're going to get to him really quick off of two. Listen to the information, Blaney's remember. Still clear. Blaney's still clear. Blaney's he won still with clear. Brad here in the spring. They're outside of Blaney now. Outside of Blaney. Bowman up to the bottom. Blaney's gotten clear again. Toyota's trying to start a third lane to brook this second lane up. 12 2 9's all clear. Third lane's non existent now. Five cars cleared behind. 
you may wonder why it matters to the driver what's going on in the third lane 10 rows behind him because he needs to know if there's forward momentum he needs to know what's going on behind him so he can start formulating the plan that information hey it's non-existent means don't even think about it put it out of your mind a lot of cars have dropped out of this pack too which is taking a ton of energy out of it and giving this bottom line uh, the ability to dominate not so many cars up in this lead pack many guys easing out seeing uh, larson get out of this lead pack earlier we saw denny hamlin go to the back of it with less cars there's less energy less ability to make that outside line work bubba wallace hasn't given up on it yet yeah that that only hurts that outside line though you know you start getting three wide at the back of that line now you don't build that forward energy it slowed that whole line down he gets back in line. Now we'll start building that energy back up. Oh, there he goes again. <laughs> of course, they're coming to the competition caution. Yeah. So can't help himself. You get that run. You just got to try and see what it'll do. And it's hard not to take it every time you get it. Riding on board, roof cam, Christopher Bell, the Toyota camera. He's going to follow the Toyota. We mentioned the competition caution at or around lap 25. They just started the 25th lap. And that inside line, way more organized. You've seen a lot of jostling back in the second and third lines. And guys falling back quickly as the 23 of Bubba Wallace is headed to the back of the pack. Kurt Busch has got that Monster Energy number one leading the second line as they come through the trioval. And again, the start finish line just past this trioval right there. As they cross that, we would expect the competition caution any moment now. I feel like some of the drivers are trying to guess when the caution is going to come out to try to pick up a few spots. It actually costs push a few spots right there. Yeah, you can see them all starting to race now. Just like you said, Jeff, thinking that caution is going to come out. I'm going to jump out here and get about two or three spots, and there's the caution. 26 laps, 69 miles into this race. So Cole Custer, uh, when the first caution comes out, leading the Ford Brigade of Custer, Logano, Harvick, Blaney. Chase Elliott was up there inside the top five. Brad Keselowski, Kurt Busch, Michael McDowell, the Daytona 500 winner from earlier this year, is eighth. Ross Chastain, another super speedway driver that a lot of people don't mind working with uh, to get to the front, uh, has had great success as well as Eric Jones in the top 10. Okay, as the competition has come out, let's take a look at the Ruoff Mortgage Keys to Victory Lane. I know it's early in this one. Uh, there's still 162 laps to go, but Steve, you do have to stay sharp, right? Well, we talked about it at the top of the show. Who, who used the overnight to stay sharp, get their team focused and ready to go? Seems like the front of the pack pretty clean early. Well, you're coming to Talladega. There's always a big one. The big one's a huge wreck. Multi-car pileups are common here. You've got to avoid it if you don't win this race. Yeah, certain parts of this race, we're going to have green flag pit stops. they will probably two tire stops, maybe gas only. Pit road will be busy. You don't want to have contact coming in out of your stall. You don't want to slide the tires coming on the pit road. You don't want to speed coming into that first segment. It's going to cost you to lose the draft as you exit pit road. And guys, we're going to be bringing up a term side drafting uh, pretty much this whole race. Talk us through it. Guys. So you see the air coming around the car right here off the nose of the car going over the spoiler and all that. Now the other car comes up beside the air gets dumped off the side onto the rear spoiler of the lead car. It slows that car down. That's what you want to do. That's a tactic that the drivers will use all day long to slow down that lead car. And as he moves forward, he'll want to jump away or get away. It's like jumping the wake. Of a, if you're skiing in the water, you jump the wake. Watch this 20 car, Christopher Bell. He comes up the inside. Martin Truex Jr., a little side draft, then he moves away because the air coming off the front of Truex's car can slow you down. So you want to side draft, pull the, pull the 19 back, and get away from him. Don't allow him to side draft you as a, as a defense to that move. Field all in line, and they will be coming to pit road. Now they can add fuel, change tires, uh, make adjustments, whatever they need to do for this race. Parker. 
Greg Rickon for Joe Logano. He came on the radio and described to Paul Wolf exactly what he could do behind that four car, how long he could push without the temperatures getting too high. It should just be right side tires for Joe Logano, Dave. They were discussing that option, Parker, for Brad Keselowski. And crew chief Jeremy Bowen said, I want to do what keeps us up front. So I believe that'll be two right side tires. A piece of tape on the front as well, Marty. Well, Kevin Harvick, Ryan Blaney, no to tail coming down pit road. Going to be right side tires for both of those cars. And they're working around each other as they leave pit road. Harvick will actually gain a few spots. Meanwhile, the first stall on pit road, Denny Hamlin completely missed his stall. Now finally rolling back into his stall. Hamlin will get his service, but he was already at the back of the pack, Rick. Hamlin not as worried about this first stop of the day. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by the Yellowwood brand. Proudly introduce new Yellowwood protector stain and water repellent. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Visit GoCreditOne.com. Brestree, for more information, visit Brestree.com. And by Toyota. Well, pit road got pretty busy. Chase Elliott leaving his pit box. A lot of cars on pit road at the same time. Cody Ware coming to his pit stall, almost made contact. Great call right here. I don't know. Chase Elliott just saw it, made that decision on his own. Good thing nobody was in that box. And Denny Hamlin, you said some drivers might be sleeping at the start of this race. There's one of them. <laughs> he slid through by a full box. Maybe he was just testing the limits. Nothing, nothing to lose, right? Nothing to lose. He's He's in the next round of the playoffs, sliding his box hard just to see how, how far he can get in there. Let's listen to him. You want to race here, Benny T, or what? Are you asking if I want to race, like, towards the front? Correct. Uh, yeah, I mean, in this situation, yeah, I mean, I would. He's the only one get, that gets asked that question right now because yeah. everybody else does want to race. Well, why they ask that question is because Denny doesn't need the points, right? So are you going to go up there and help your teammates? What do you want to do? Sounds like Denny looks like he's going to the front. We'll see. Field approaching the Geico restart zone. We get back underway here at Talladega. Two 
Two Stuart Haas teammates up front. Little team orders there as Harvick drops down in front of Cole Custer. Going to try to pull that inside line forward, but that outside line, all really close, bumper to bumper. Brad Kozlowski, Kurt Busch, Martrex Jr. They're going to have great momentum off a of turn two if this inside line can't organize. You see right there, Brad got separated from that two, the lead two, so that's going to take that energy away from him. They start catching him from behind. Look how quickly Kurt Busch said, nah, don't need you anymore there, Martin. I'm going to come down to this low line and see what it will do. So now here comes the help back to Martin Truex from Brad. Brad on that inside left corner. Hard to push there without getting that 19 car upset. And that situation that Martin was in right there, when your car gets so slow, it feels like the brakes are on, and then that two gets in behind you, and it's, it's like you shifted gears, and it just takes off. Unbelievable how much faster it is with that two car pushing you. And if you're pushing, you can drive up there and, and hit that car as hard as you want. That typically doesn't do a good job of pushing both cars forward. But if you come up really quick on that car, that lead car, and you come off the gas a little bit and slow down your car, and just kind of connect. Connect the two cars, and then throttle up. You really can move forward down the straightaway or through the corner really, really quickly. Party. Boy, Dell, you and Jeff Doe, certainly that tandem drafting can work. But, Steve, it's not like it used to be when you would see cars tandem draft the entire day. They had, what, six-gallon radiators back then? Radiators much smaller these days. The cooling capacity not nearly there. But if your car is set up for it, you can do it about a lap, a lap and a half, kind of give your guy in front of you a shot out. And late in the race, that's especially when we might see it, but tandem drafting certainly playing a factor early here at Talladega. Man, there's so many moves happening between the inside and the middle and the outside line. Martrix Jr. jumps in front of his teammates. A lot of these moves all dependent on the manufacturer that you're that, that's in each line. Well, that middle lane, see that 11 car, third car back in the middle lane, that was Denny Hamlin. That's Denny Hamlin, remember, his crew chief, Chris Gabart. Hey, you want to race? And he's like, yeah, why not? And I love the move. If you want, that 11 car is going to be a contender. Benny Hamlin is great at these racetracks. He needs to know what his car can do, what it can't do. And he needs to show the competition that my car is fast. Go with me when I make a move. I love him being in the middle of this right now. But it's so frustrating to watch, for example, Martin Truex Jr. jump up out of the middle line to get in the outside line in front of Christopher Bell, only because he's a teammate in a Toyota. Whereas I would want to be in front of Brad Kowalski, get help from Brad. Brad's really good at these races, great at pushing, great at connecting the cars together and making a lot out of that push to move our cars forward, Marty. Ricky Senhouse Jr. has kind of fallen to the back of this pack. Remember, he lost the draft early on as the Sunny D onboard shows us. He's at the back of this main pack. And look, they razor bladed off a little bit of that Sunny D decal for Ricky Senhouse Jr. I'm not sure that was an advantage or not. It was not intentional, certainly, that the decal came up. But Stenhouse promises all day long to be aggressive. So that means we need to watch that whoop data. Right now, 117 beats per minute sitting at the back of that pack. I'm sure that'll go up as the day goes on. That outside line creates some great momentum. Guys are starting to see that. They're jumping there, trying to block it. We saw Joey Logano look like he was going to take advantage of it. His teammate jumps in front of him. Now Harvick in front of him. Now Kurt in front of him. Everybody to the top, just like that. What's the advantage of running the high line? I think that in the high line, there's less of an accordion effect between the cars, less lifting for the following cars. Harvick to the bottom takes advantage of Kurt Busch asleep at the wheel. Kurt doesn't defend that. You got to be ready, man. If you go to the top, guys don't seem like they're willing to stay up there. They're not willing to get into, lulled into running that high line right just yet. And look who's already now up into the top six, Denny Hamlin in that 11. He asked the question, or was asked the question, do you want to race? Sure enough, he's already got a win in this round, which advances him to the round of eight but Denny Hamlin, so good on restrictor plate races, he wants to get up there and mix it up. Yeah, again, I love the call. Denny Hamlin's so good at this racetrack. Daytona, he's good everywhere, but, you know, he needs to know what his car can do, what it can't do. He's learning so much more than he would be riding around the back waiting for the end of this race. It's Kevin Harvick up front. He was below the cut line before the start of this race. Now up front. 
looking strong here at Talladega. Marty. So impressive what Denny Hamlin has done. You guys mentioned it. Restarted 24th on this restart just a few laps ago. Now sitting there in the seventh position. Talking to Denny and Chris Gabehart this week. Obviously, you've mentioned the win at Vegas, Rick, advancing them to the next round. So they race free today. Gabehart told me, listen, we're worried about two things. Seven points, meaning they want to win some more stages and get more playoff points and getting some experience and helping our teammates. So right now, Denny trying to get to the front, Dave, and get another playoff point here in the playoffs. So that point about helping the teammates that's interesting for the 20 of Christopher Bell because they are the Toyota in the playoffs that needs the most help you know, we talked recently about Martin Truex Jr. falling back to try to help Christopher Christopher's team and crew chief Adam Stevens knows that it's not all about them today although they do expect if there is an opportunity to help them coach Gibbs that was from Adam Stevens expects us to work together but there's no mandate to push the 20 there's no mandate not to pass the 20 we'll see if Hamlin and Truex can help their teammates somehow move forward by racing. And Junior, that was a perfect example. We were riding along there with Christopher Bell. We heard him come up right on the back bumper of the 19 of Mark Trucks Jr. And he got out of the gas before running into the back of him. He just let off the gas a bit just to get to the back bumper. Go full throttle with Wi-Fi speeds for celebrating. Fast internet for a faster everything. Can your internet do that? Want to take a look at today's Xfinity fastest lap. It comes into play when you set the field for next week's race at the Roval. And right now, the Xfinity fastest lap is Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Average speed around this 2.66 mile super speedway at just over 197 miles an hour. For the Michael McDowell fans, if you caught it, the field had caught him to put him a lap down. Slow pit stop, fixing some damage, made him lose the draft, and now a lap down to the field. Riding along the, look back on the Sunny D 
A shot of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. A lot of times we see the eyes go up to the mirror uh, almost more than they're looking out the windshield here at Talladega. It'll be interesting to watch that heartbeat as we get closer to this stage in. Things are going to get wild. Denny Hamlin up front, and so now Keslowski with a charge with Busher behind him. Parker. Well, guys, we see all these teammates working together. We see these manufacturers working together. And, Dale, you're looking for maybe someone who's going to be looking out for just themselves. Well, then look no further than that one car of Kurt Busch. Think about this. At the end of this year, he's going to 2311 in a Toyota team. That team, Ganassi, is being acquired by Trackhouse. Their affiliations are not really as abundant as some of these other organizations. And they told me we can be looking out for ourselves. Look how he got to the lead earlier. He used a Toyota to get there and got in front of a bunch of Fords. If you want a driver that maybe is just looking out for themselves, I think that one car could be a good bet today and now all timing too. Uh, Parker as you mentioned get there to the front he was able to get to the front earlier in this race but with 19 laps to go in stage one you have to time it out you have to be in the right line you got to be in the right position jump in front of the right car to get you to the front which we've seen, we've seen Denny Hamlin do Alec Bowman hung up in that third groove you have to wonder whether they chose to get out of this mess they think it's getting a little bit too hairy He's obviously right now 40 points below the cut line. Maybe choosing to not race for play, playoff points in this first stage. William Byron, he jumped up to that outside lane, the three wide. You can see, look at the line starting on that outside lane. Blaney gets shuffled out, so Byron in front of that third line. And Blaney with a big run now. Let's see if he takes it. It goes by the four. No, he'll come right up to the bumper of the four and move that forward line a little bit further forward. Right behind that bright yellow 12 car Blaney is Justin Haley. Won a lot of races at Daytona Talladega at Xfinity Series. Getting a shot today in this college car. He's going to drive this car full time next year. Jumped up to that outside line. We're trying to lead it. Dave. And Jeff, that car has some good mojo. Brendan Gaughan used to drive that car when he was racing for Beard Motorsports. It's new to this team, but it's got a good heritage on these super speedway tracks. Dave, I can tell you Alex Bowman did not intentionally fall back, and you can see him trying to storm back up through the middle there, trying to get that ally, purple number 48, back up into the top 10. Talking to the team this morning, Greg Ives told me, listen, normally we play it pretty conservatively at these super speedway races. Today, we cannot. We have to have stage one, stage one, stage two, and put ourselves in a better position going to the Robo next week. So Bowman, who a moment ago had lost his draft, has now caught back up by going to the middle. And in two... In two laps, he went from minus 41 to the cut line to minus 12 that time by the start-finish line. All these drivers have so much at stake as they move forward and backward through this field. The intensity inside the helmet, inside those cars is real. A lot of pushing starting to happen. Saw that outside lane. Saw Logano's car wiggle really big down the back stretch. As, this, as we get closer to this stage in, you're going to see more and more pushing. Chris Buescher in the 17, and Brad Kozlowski in the 2. Ford pushing Ford, and Brad Kozlowski will be with Roush Fenway Racing next year as a driver owner. Parker. Well, guys, we look at this pack here. For sort of the back of it is Martin Truex Jr., who we've seen up front and gets shuffled out, and that's not really by design. He wanted to go up there and lead at the front of these packs. This team told me, you know, we look at our past history. Whenever we hung out, we get less points than when we just go hard, try and get stage points, and if we get wrecked in that third stage, so be it. So we are absolutely going to try and get stage points, but it's been tough for that 19 team to stay up front. He's been complaining about not having the help. Maybe the Toyota is not working together as well as they'd hoped. So that 19 trying to work his way back forward right now. Remember, came in here just 31 points above the cut line. It's going to be a tough road where they are right now. Take a look at all the different onboards that we're able to look at and ride along with. Kozlowski, Logano, Elliott Bell, Stenhouse Jr. That outside line trying to form. Everybody on that inside line is going to be late to the party. Or will they continue to stay committed? You know, Denny Hamlin has nothing to lose. He'll say, hey, hey, I'm, I'm going to stay down here if y'all want to hang out. We'll try to keep this bottom line going. There's some gaps right here behind Martin Trix Jr. Some guys are going to jump up into that. They're going to bail on this bottom through. We're going to see the whole field running the high line here in a second. You better find somewhere to go. It's like going into the movie theater late. 
You look around, you're like, oh, these seats are terrible. Nothing available. That's what it's like when that top side forms and you're not paying attention. And it happened quick. Now, virtually the field in line. At least the top 20 that have decided to go to the top. And here comes the two of Keselowski. Look at him forging. He actually used those lap down cars to get a little bit more of a run. And that lap traffic could change things. It could change things, create an opportunity for some of these guys to break up this outside line. Look at William Byron. I'm going to go to the bottom here. Who's going to follow me? Are they going to go with him? Nope. Looks like Kurt Busch says, I don't like that. He's going to send William Byron to the back. Denny Hamlin went down there with him, but nobody has anything for Kislowski right now. Make sure to download the official app of NASCAR. You can follow the action with free live scoring and in-car cameras as well as radio broadcast. Search NASCAR in your app store and you can download and start a free trial today. As most of the field got single file right there. It is drug it to the top. Everybody's chasing after Keselowski. Mountain Dew is fueling outdoor enthusiasts with chances to win epic prizes this fall. Dew fans can visit DoOutdoors.com to take action to protect the outdoor spaces they love for daily chances to win. Each action taken means more chances to win amazing prizes, including a 2022 Ford F-150. During your during break, you and I had this conversation, Jeff, about different agendas, right? Single file, the Ford's up front, probably happy. But you look back here, Chase Elliott in the nine, he needs some stage points. He's trying to make something happen. Yeah, he does. He is a Drive down in the corner, watch what happens. See, other guys, now they've all started to go to the bottom. Look, nine to go. The only way to gain track position is to get out of line, go to make something happen. Right along with his A-Shock Performance Energy camera, Chase Elliott, he kind of was pushing this. Hey, everybody, we need to get this bottom going. Now some are bailing out. This is so amazing to watch. All these guys that are in the top 10, they're like, stay in line, don't screw this up. We're almost to the end of the stage. The guys that aren't in the top 10 that need stage points are trying to make it to the front any way possible, Dave. 
Who needs stage points? This guy, the guy in the lead, Brad Keselowski. He came in on the bubble, eighth out of eight, and they need every point they can get today. The two has found his way to the front, and he's going to try to stay there, hold these guys off for eight more laps, guys. Well, he's had success, obviously, at this racetrack. Uh, three stage wins here. No one else has won more than one. But Keselowski knows how to lead. And interestingly, it was only a couple years ago where Brad Keselowski said, I hate this blocking thing. I hate when you, you know, this aggressive blocking. Well, now he's gotten pretty good at it, and he's been able to keep that number two up front. On that outside line, a couple Chevrolets. Tyler Reddick, Chase Elliott pushing him for everything he's worth, trying to get up to the front. I like their opportunity right here. Now that that top line's gone away, they're making a little headway. Reddick up alongside the 12 car. They're going to have great momentum down the back straightaway. Chase is trying to get to that bumper. He's connected right there. Push, push, push down the back straightaway. Two car sees it. He gets up and block. Huge momentum. Reddick decides to stay in the back bumper of the two, try to recover Brad Keselowski. And as these shoves grow, and these pushes and these blocks, if you're not a playoff car, you don't need stage points. You have to ask yourself very clearly with six coming to six to go, do you want to be in the middle of this? I wonder if Brad made that move a little too early to try to defend that outside line. He's got a great opportunity, though, to rebound with the eight car pushing him down the front straightaway. And remember, TJ Major spotting now for Brad Keselowski. TJ, such success on super speedways, really sees that momentum. Yeah, Brad Keselowski, he didn't want to be in this lane. Look at this right here, down the back straightaway. Legato pushing Busher, Busher, boom, into the back of him, knocks the two car sideways. Busher drives underneath him. Wow, Brad didn't want to be there. He got he got put there. Now he's got himself back in good position, but it separated the Fords. Now you got some on the outside, some on the inside, Marty. And look who's bailed on this. Denny Hamlin way back in 27th. I think even though they've advanced, he said, you know what? They're getting a little too racy for me with six to go. I'm going to go to the back of this pack. It's absolutely intense. Way too intense for a guy who doesn't have anything to gain by finishing in the top 10 of the stage. Chase Elliott, Brad Kozlowski fighting for stage points now. Five laps to go, 13.3 miles remaining in stage one. See Joey Logano, 140 beats per minute. That strain all the way up to 13 already. Or end up axes out at 21. Five laps to go. Bowman to the outside in the third groove. Chase Elliott jumps up in front of him. Reddick's going to go up there. A little bit of pushing. Car's upset. But that outside line's got some momentum. Kurt Busch kind of hung in the middle with not a lot of help behind him. Yeah, Harvick clears. Harvick clears Busch. Now can Blaney clear him? He does. Keselowski to the move on the outside. I think again he gets sent into that position, not wanting to go there. But the pushes are getting so. Oh, around goes to 77. Justin Allgaier spins, collects the five. So Larson also in it. Oh, Larson. How much damage did he get? 77 hit him in the door. I think the five got up against the fence as well. I got hit in the Quite a bit of damage to the right side there. My steering wheel is at about five o'clock. So oh, well, at 5 o'clock, that's upside down nearly. And that's 77 of Justin Allgaier filling in for Spire Motorsports here in the 77 this weekend. Justin Haley normally behind the wheel of this car. Allgaier in the hunt for the Xfinity Series championship. He said his wheel is 5 o'clock. That means that it is, it's got serious front end damage. Let's see what happens. Back side of your screen on the right there, the 24 William Byron. It's in the back, a little bit of movement. The 77 corrects that movement, and as he's continuously getting pushed, it steers him into the wall, directly into the left front tire of Kyle Larson. That could be major damage. Closing in on the end of stage one.
You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. Yellowwood 500 from Talladega Super Speedway. A couple cars collected in this most recent caution. One of those being the 77 of Justin Allgaier. The 5 of Kyle Larson. And that's big news for Kyle Larson, who thought he was comfortable going into the final race of the season, or at this stage. See right there, just a little bit of pushing. The 77 car just couldn't stay straight with that push and just couldn't keep up with it. Justin Algar driving that car today. Justin's a really good race car driver. Just, just no way to keep control right there. You can see the 14. Chase Briscoe going through, getting a lot of left front damage there. 37 car sliding through the grass. He's come down to pit road for four tires to clean off the grill. Ryan Priest. And this is going to go all the way to the end of stage one. So it will end under caution. And crazy at a track like Talladega, the communication and speed are so important for the AMR safety team. Let's hear more from one of our frontline workers at the track. Thanks to Verizon. So I'm one of the responding physicians on track, along with the AMR NASCAR safety team, working with the local track medics and firefighters. Honestly, here, speed is of the essence. We're used to an emergency medicine working in seconds and minutes, but here on track, the expectation is that we're gonna be at a vehicle within 15 to 20 seconds, if not sooner, because we know that with significant injuries, especially in a motor vehicle collision, seconds count. And we wanna make sure that we're there for those drivers and that we get them the care and assistance and attention they need as quickly as possible. Thank Dr. Ryan Stanton and all of the AMR safety crew workers. Look at all the damage here, Steve. So the sheet metal, I think, is not as big of an issue. They've done a nice job. It's under the hood. You see the mechanic. You see the large wrench to the right. I'm guessing that was to loosen the tie rod. He's reaching down in there right now, probably adjusting the front toe. There you go. Second wrench came out. So either an upper control arm issue or a steering issue. You guys talked about his steering wheel at five. So definitely contact to that left front wheel, Parker. Right, Steven, it's been amazing to listen to this team led by Cliff Daniels and how calm they've been through this process. We always talk about championship race teams when their backs are against the wall. How do they react? This team has been super calm. He's been taking them through each and every stage of how where the pace car is and was talking exactly through when they put the tires on the last stop and on that stop, as you pointed out, they were putting the toe back and trying to pull some of the sheet metal away from that left rear tire, which is cutting it down. So this is pretty amazing to watch this team try and rally back from this issue. So I think the repairs are possible, Rick. The biggest thing right now is just make sure you understand your crash clock and don't eliminate yourself from the race just by a simple, you know, clerical mistake on the clock. Let's listen into the five team. You got to keep me posted on the pace car. Again, let's get the tires changed that are flat. Let's get the fenders beat away from the tires so that we're going to stay caught up. I like Cliff Daniels just taking charge, coming up with a very specific plan. Flat tires first, then sheet metal, then mechanical. Remember, he is on the crash clock, but if he can meet, reach minimum speed, which I assume he'll be able to do in the draft, that will help him out quite a bit. Then you just continue to work. Once you're off that clock, you could spend as much time on pit road as you'd like, continuing to repair this car. I'm confident in saying this will not be the only accident we see today. There's yeah, going to be points available. Like five so, yeah, understood. We're going to get the wheel fixed here. So just to clarify, when a driver sits in his car, he's got a piece of tape on the on the steering wheel, puts that at 12 o'clock, and his is turned all the way to 5 o'clock. So the misalignment on the front end is that far off. So his steering wheel is almost 180 degrees off of where it's supposed to be. Cut it off. So here you go, shut it off. It's way safer for the mechanics to work around the front of the engine without the pulleys running. They're adjusting the left front because that's where the damage was. They're confident the right front. In turn three, you're not going to have a ton of time, Jesse. Get information, crew chief to mechanic, how much time you have so you don't get something loose, you don't have time to tighten up. Middle of three and four. They're adjusting the tie rod on the left front. Middle of three and four. Just off of four. At this point, with so much toe damage, is it possible or just best to probably just take that lap? Four. Get it busted up. Make sure you don't see any tire rubs anywhere else, Thomas. You got about another 10 seconds. Look at everything. Fire it up, Kyle. What's Fire it up. Here, Fire. Steve? What are you trying to do? I would probably go ahead and fix it here and try not to lose a lap push, only push, because... Push. Can he get it fired? This is a problem here. Can here. That's a problem. I always hate turning a car off on pit road fixing damage. If it doesn't fire back fire. up, you're going to get lapped. Well, no. The He's got to get off pit road because he's on the clock right now. Yes, this is a big issue because his DVP is also running as well, sitting on pit road. Fired up. Now he's moving. I hate 
turning the race car off on pit road. It's just been too many times I've gone to fire it up and it will not fire. And the pit crew, the crew chief, Steve, he isn't thinking that you have a problem firing it up. If Correct. it takes five seconds longer, you're going to get lapped. And while all that was happening, Chris Buescher just won his third career stage and second year at Talladega. We'll be back for pit stops for Talladega here. The end of stage one, eventful. Sixty laps complete, 128 laps to go. That's 340.48 miles remaining here at Talladega. As we take a look at the stage points, cars coming onto pit road. Parker, All right, Rick and Joe Logano came to this race six points above the cut line, gets nine stage points. There will be four Goodyear tires for the 22. Dave, eight stage points for Brad Keselowski. He'll take four Goodyear tires and Snowgo fuel. Tire carrier Jesse Mills will take a piece of tape off of his helmet, slap it on the front of Mustang, Marty. Boy, Dave, the Fords worked so well together, running the top, and then moving to the bottom, they were able to get the stage win for the 17 car. Meanwhile, Kevin Harvick said his car really good. You see four fresh Goodyear tires going on. Brian Blaney pretty happy as well. Under that caution, though, Blaney said, I have a terrible brake shake so bad, it's shaking the steering wheel. I have to keep our eyes on that for the rest of the race, Rick. Harvick gains three spots, comes off pit road in the lead.
NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Ram Trucks, the only truck brand to win Motor Trend Truck of the Year three years in a row. Ally, do it right. And by Yellowwood Brand, proudly introduced new Yellowwood Protector Stain and Water Repellent. And of course, the entitlement sponsor, Yellowwood, had a lot of fun planned for fans this weekend at their Backyard Bash. Fans able to experience driver simulator, live music, cornhole, other games. You see Jeff Burton, Mike Bagley there, able to stop chat with the fans. Battle of the broadcast. Is that what it was? That's what that Where was. Who won it? that? Where was Who your life you vest? <laughs> Bagley does a good job at that stuff, doesn't he? Where was your life vest? <laughs> I took it off <laughs> just before I got on stage. I didn't know it was required. <laughs> Marty. Rick, that caution worked out well for a couple of teams. Denny Hamlin, we'll start with him. He came down pit road. They went with two tires, and you see that is the left rear. It was actually going down. They had no idea it was going down when Denny was on the racetrack, and a good thing they changed the left side tires as well, so a fortunate catch for the 11 team. Also, after the pit stop, Kevin Harvick gained the lead and then had a flat left rear. They think they might have knocked a foul stem out maybe. They're trying to diagnose what exactly happened, so Harvick pitted a second time and took on four Goodyear your tires gave up the lead obviously he'll restart in the back so the last time they went by start finish line it was Logano who was scored up front Hamlin Kozlowski Busher Blaney all up there but the five of Kyle Larson they have been on pit road multiple times Parker Right, Rick, let's update their situation here. So they were involved in that wreck with the 77. The toe got knocked down on the five, and also there's a huge dent on the left side. The team has come in multiple times, fixed the sheet metal, and tried to fix the toe. And now their objective, right? They have to meet minimum speed to get off the damaged vehicle policy, which they've run out of time on. And so Kyle has been, the team has been talking to Kyle about what that means. They have to go, they have three laps to meet minimum speed once we go green here to get off that DVP. If they're unable to do so, then they have to come down and they're forced out of the race so the team is trying to talk to Kyle if he can meet it he came on the radio and just said I don't know if we're gonna be able to accomplish it because we're gonna have a tire blow here maybe well the tire issue is I know maybe it's an optical illusion but look at the right front of this tie I think the right front is turned to the right a substantial amount as he tries to go straight down uh, the back straightaway and I think that comes down to the contact to the left right so whichever front tire has the most load is gonna take the car straight and the other one's gonna kinda hover in the wind going the wrong direction. So the arrow issue for the five, I don't believe is as big of an issue, even as bad as it looks, as the tires themselves. I mean, the right front drivers, am I imagining that or does that thing look turned to the right to you? It, does look, it looks a little bit turned to the right to me. Look at that, yeah, that, yeah there's no question. The problem with that, Steve, is that, you know, there's more things to get bent underneath that car than what they can fix on pit road. Uh, there's lower control arms, there's ball joints, there's all types of things. That tie rod's an adjustment, but you may not ever get this fixed today. Well, you definitely don't want that blowing at 197 miles an hour either, Marty. We did find out it was indeed a valve stem that came out. Steve, that's a crew chief's nightmare right there, isn't it? The uh, left rear valve stem for Kevin Harvick popped out on that stop. Good thing they caught it before they went back green. We've seen that happen a couple of times here in the playoffs so far, guys. Field approaching the Geico restart zone. Brett Dalton, the flag man, will show them the green once they get going. That's Logano. Logano first into the gas. Denny Hamlin. They both separate from the cars behind him, but here comes that two of Keslowski. He'll get on the back bumper of Logano and start to push that inside line. Penske drivers lined up on the inside line. Logano, Keslowski, and Blaney. That was good organization, but now they've broken away from Blaney. And now they two are separated, the two and the 22. But there's no speed in the outside line. Reddick's going to jump in there. He's going to take that momentum that he had catching up Blaney. Go to the outside with it. Hopefully get some help from Denny Hamlin here. Off of turn four. Both lines are going to accelerate up the back of this two car. Look at the run Reddick has now. Looking back from the Coca-Cola Zero Sugar camera of Joey Logano. He's on that inside line and now outside of him is Tyler Reddick. We see the 18 of Kyle Busch way out of line on that third line up there through the trial and into one. I assume he just doesn't want to play right now, figures it's going to be too wild. And 
all the way at the back of all of these cars, Kyle Larson. This will be the last that matters most to him. He should be able to get a pretty good tow, clear that damage vehicle policy. That will allow that clock to disappear, spend as much time on pit road as needed. But I think he's looking for her yellow to continue to fix this damage. I almost feel like Steve, as soon as he meets minimum speed, he's better off just coming down pit road and going to work, even if he gets a bunch of laps down, as bad as that right front looked. And Larson right now scored a lap down in the 39th position. So that does affect the points. He's only 33 above the cut line now. We still Redick. see a big push out of the 11 of Denny Hamlin getting Reddick out front. Reddick's had a really strong year this year. Oh, the five cars at the wall into turn one. Maybe that right Blew front the right went down. Tire. Parker. Guys, and he was able to meet minimum speed as that tire was blowing through the travel. He was getting pushed by the one at Kurt Busch. He came on the radio, said, I got a tire going down, and they said, keep going, you're going to meet minimum speed, and he was able to do that. So if they get that cautioner that just came out, they can come down and work on that car now. Okay, Steve, I have to ask, as far as rules go, it's his tire. Go ahead and lose this lap. Is the caution the because of him, and does he go back on the one DVP? He does. Now he's back on a six-minute clock again. The yeah. first one reset. Now this one, they will put him on the DVP again. He'll have six more minutes to continue these repairs. Look at how bad the damage is now to the right front. He, he couldn't meet minimum speed the first lap because you have to get up to speed. There's no way these cars just all of a sudden get going fast enough. It takes two full laps to be able to meet that minimum speed. And Steve, you did a great job of showing how, how everybody, how that right front was towed way out. The damage so we made on the minimum, left front. so we have time to deal with it. The so damage was on the left front, but all that got moved to the right front because as they were making adjustments to the left side, trying to help it, it's just too much bend in that car to fix it. Yeah, you see right here as the pack goes in, the five already in the wall. We're asking NASCAR right now to answer your question, Rick. If the caution was for debris, do they feel that the five should or shouldn't be on the damage vehicle policy? and be on that clock that you mentioned. We'll get an answer from them. Let everybody know when we come back to Talladega as repairs continue for Kyle Larson. TV's most anticipated new show is here. Don't miss an all-new La Brea. It's Tuesday on NBC. And Steve, 
the most successful car this season right now. Maybe a little bit of anxiety for this team? Well, for sure. They had a flat tire. They were in the original accident. They went out. They did this, the best repairs they could. Not enough. Had another flat tire. So now they're back on pit road. You see the clock. This is the second clock. They already that was on the first clock. It was reset with you running minimum speed. Now they're on the second clock. You see it counting down. A different approach by Cliff Daniels and the five right here, though. They know the damage is severe. They're not playing with laps, trying to beat the pace car. They are just sitting in their pit stall, working on their race car. Great management by Cliff Daniels right here. Keep this car on track, hoping more cars will get into an accident. And Steve, this is the car that we've talked about all year long. It's just easily going to go to Phoenix for the chance to win the championship. This is how things can unravel. This is how quickly things can happen. Sure you have a bad day here today, you go to the roller next week, just don't run well. But you can find yourself not advancing. And what makes people nervous is he was just riding along in the outside lane when the 77 got turned and caught him in the left front tire. So bond on it, whatever you need here. Right here, put your bear bond, clean it all up. Under this same yellow, we saw a lot of cars come down pit road, really mostly for gas, with 51 to go in this stage. It's going to be a big stretch for the fuel tank. I actually think we might see some cars come top off at one to go. So a little bit of strategy for the lead lap guys and some repair work for Kyle Larson. A lot of repair work taking place right now for the five of Kyle Larson. You could be headed on a VIP trip to the 2022 Daytona 500. All you have to do, visit NASCAR.com slash Daytona 500 and enter the code DRAFT for your chance to win. It's a once in a lifetime experience, Rick. That place is awesome. But you've done it a few times in your lifetime. I have been there a few times. <laughs> it really is pretty amazing. You're watching the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. Yellowwood 500 from Talladega Super Speedway. Stage one complete. Stage two, 10 laps in already. 50 still to go in stage two. Make sure to check your fantasy lineup. Might want to pull the five of Larson out of it if you had him in there. He's three laps down right now, but still continuing. As we ride along with Brad Keselowski, thanks to the Ford Performance Cam. 
and we see the, I'm sorry, Junior, I was going to say we still have the Fords up front, but with all those guys that came to take fuel only, it wouldn't surprise if we see some more cars yeah. come down pit road. Morning. As we watch the drama play out with Kyle Larson, we saw a lot of cars come down pit road. Steve, you mentioned that. They're coming to one to go here, and now everybody is going to come down pit road, get fuel only. It's still a stretch from here to be able to make it all the way to the end of stage two here, 50 laps to go. But, Steve, how about this call? The entire field coming down with one to go here to the green flag to get fuel. Yeah, so what this is going to do is put everyone in the same fuel window, and it usually waves off one to go because now they're all going to rejoin the racetrack and try to find a way to line up uh, double file. And they're going to yeah, need more than fuel out the 11. Yeah, we down here, Rick. Did you see that with Ryan Blaney and Denny Hamlin? They almost hit each other. Hamlin slid his tires. They're going to send him out, though. And there you see Daniel Suarez missing his stall. So a little bit of chaos down here on pit road. Yeah, we hope that... Denny Hamlin didn't flat spot his tires there. You saw some smoke coming up as he was slamming on the brakes here. Yeah, that was a pretty good slide right there, to be honest with you, but he should be okay. You have to wonder if this is a reaction. Obviously, these guys know they need the gas, but is this a reaction because of last week how the Hendrick guys put themselves into such a terrible situation on fuel mileage on one of the states? I think it was stage two. Nobody wants to be in that situation again where they've got to come down to pit road and the rest of the field doesn't. Especially if it was last week. Because when your owner says, hey, were you not in Las Vegas? <laughs> Just saw this a week ago. Be like, oh, yeah, well, you're right. Sorry, my, my mistake. Shutting the car off, saving a little fuel there as Ricky Stenhouse Jr. As we look back at the Sunny D camp. All right, so we've talked about the anxiety and the heart rate of some of these drivers as we look at the whoop data from Ricky Stenhouse Jr. I'm interested to see how well he recovers under yellow, right? Riding along as he get that heart rate to go down. There you go. It's all the way back to 100. We saw, well, max for the day, 158. Now it's back to 100. Average right around 116. But if you can call this a break, I, I actually don't believe you can call a pit stop a break. I think these guys are working the whole time. Are well, you flipping switches, saving fuel? doing all those annoying things your crew chief asked you to do. <laughs> it's really uh, used to be a nice, you know, moment to sort of take a breath and relax and think about the race and the moves you made, the moves you made wrong and right, but now you got all kinds of things to pay attention to. See Joey Logano, he's recovered at about 110. How about that strain score, 13.6? It's like he ran a 10K already. And he hasn't made it through halfway of this race and more cars come to pit road because as we mentioned because the field pitted at one to go NASCAR had to give it one more lap to get the lineup correct which means these cars at the back they're going to come down and get another lap of fuel so looks like the 21 16 the 7 there you go Maddie D I think benefactor in all of these pit stops we had a lot of cars on pit road early in this caution one guy that stayed out right then was Kevin Harvick. And then he pitted this neck the, when most of the cars pitted later. Remember, he got penalized. The pit stop before that, he got penalized. He was in the back of the pack. He's a driver that has to get stage points if he wants to move into the next round of playoffs. He now, by playing strategy under this caution, Steve, he now has gotten himself back solidly into the top eight. It's the easiest way to get track position even at a super speedway is, is to work that strategy. And on the front, we're going to see Cody Ware and Joey Logano. And the lights are still on the pace car. So, I mean, if these guys wanted to absolutely come down pit road and take even more fuel right here, we might see some of these guys do it. Marty, what you got on the 11 car? Hey, Dale, I know you were a little bit worried about uh, Denny Hamlin sliding those tires a little bit. Chris Gabehart trying to reassure his driver he thinks he should be okay on this run. Listen. All right, I did get some smoke on the left front, a little on the right front too, but it was pretty low speed. Not, I don't think it's a huge problem, but you might have a little bit of vibration. Yeah, that's small, it really doesn't matter. Sorry about that. 12's obviously been, been in trouble all day. We should have just checked you up on him. So there you go, Jeff. Would you be worried? It, uh, Denny doesn't seem very worried about that little flat spot he got coming to a stall. No, I agree with Chris. I think it was a pretty slow speed lockup. You know what I mean? He didn't slide them very long. I don't I don't think that's much of an issue. It is a concern. More, more only, you know, mainly can hurt tires coming on pit road. You know, when you're at the very beginning of pit road, going really quick, you try to get the car slowed up, you lock them up there is where you really hurt them. It's kind of hard to hurt them that late as you're sliding into the box. Somebody talking the four car and the, the advantage they gained and the strategy they played, I. I was thinking as a driver's standpoint, he had that flat tire, and I was thinking, well, he got penalized. You think he'd actually get 
NASCAR penalized, <laughs> but the, the valve stem came off of it, and that's why he was in the back. So he wasn't actually serving a penalty earlier. Thought we'd have more cars come to pit road. Looks like only one car on pit road currently, so. Corey LaJoy back on pit road. You saw how well Corey ran at Daytona. I keep waiting for him. Wow, really wet. Yeah, guys, turns well, one and two, oh, wow. yeah. as large as this place is, the spotters have been talking about how the track is darkening, and I believe NASCAR is going to send the jet dryers out there and dry some of this off. Yeah, turns one and two, it's actually raining there. Again, we told you that this is such a huge facility here. 2.66 2. miles. You see the rain coming down on that Toyota cam uh, for Christopher Bell. And that's in turns one and two. He's just getting onto the back stretch. Surprisingly, he'll go into turn three and it'll almost be like the sun is out, but raining in turns one and two. Yeah, Seven. right. Go ahead. James. Right now, we've only lost turns one and two. That start, that that part of the racetrack is the darker side or the darker tinted asphalt where it's wet. Um, just past start finish line, all the way around to the exit. So far, though, the rest of the track unaffected. No rain here at the booth, right just before the start finish line. Steve, I was, uh, we were talking about this, obviously, because yesterday the rain got, or the rain came, the race was postponed. Uh, to make a race official, it's either halfway or to the end of stage two. Does that make a race official? Yeah, whichever sooner. So whichever becomes earlier in the race. So here at Talladega, it's halfway. Uh, so the race today would be official at lap 94. And the interesting thing is if that is before the end of stage two. So if we did get weather again after lap 94, before lap 120, and they called the race, you still get second, second stage points, even though we haven't seen that checkered flag yet. So, it, you know, if you were, say, running fifth, that'd be a pretty valuable fifth place finish. You'd get stage points and the finish. It looks so to me like they're going to bring the cars yeah. down pit road. All the officials are lined up out there. That allows the jet dryers to have the space they need to do the work. And you hope that this is just a, a just a spot shower that hit turns one and two and passing through the radar looking actually better than when we started the race. There was a lot that was back to the southwest uh, that looked like it was coming our direction, but that dissipated. But again, a little shower in turns one and two. And so the jet dryers will head out and try to get that cleaned up. The cars on pit road. Red flag will come out here momentarily at Talladega.
the WeatherTech Sports Car Championship. Yeah. It takes nerves of steel and determination. Go on. The battles are fierce. Go on. Look at this. Oh, Let's go. This is multi-class racing. Some of the coolest, most exotic sports cars that you will see anywhere in the world. Can you not love sports car racing? IMSA season slowly coming to a close. Two races remain. We have October 9th from VIR, Virginia International Raceway for GT only event. GT Daytona, GT Le Mans will take part there. And then we'll go to the final event of the season, the marathon. A little bit of a 10 hour race. Petit Le Mans from Road Atlanta where the champion will be crowned on November 13th. Good battle between Wayne Taylor's Acura and the Whelan Engineering Cadillac for the overall championship. Dave. This at times, Steve, has seemed like a 10-hour race. But for now, we are paused as Brad Keselowski gets out, having earned some stage points. I know it's good. not exactly to plan because you're about to win that stage, but how's it going so far? Yeah, good. Uh, discount tire Ford Mustang's got a lot of speed. Uh, Fords are working together pretty well, which is uh, super helpful. Uh, in a good spot here to uh, you know keep scoring points and hopefully be in one piece at the end. That's the, at this point in the race, that's the complete focus. Like, how do we make sure we're still there uh, for lap 188 or beyond? Uh, so uh, doing a good job. Cars in one piece. Fingers crossed we can keep it going. Describe that shot that you got from Busher going down the backstretch there and, and, you know, how tough it was to maintain the lead there. Yeah, very tough. Uh, you know, the cars, they, they want to be pushed to get that extra bit of speed. But uh, when you get two or three of them together, you get that Newton's cradle effect. And it, it really shoots the first car and uh, got me crossed up a little bit. I felt lucky to save it and keep going. So as soon as you got out, you did the walk around, kind of like when you get a rental car and you want to make <laughs> sure there are any dings on there. What'd you see? Anything? Dave, sounds like you got a little experience with that. Oh, yeah, well, I've been charged before. <laughs> yes, I understand. Uh, no, just trying to understand how hard I can push and how hard I can take pushes. And, you know, every time you push with these cars, you do a little bit of damage to them. Uh, but it's faster, so you know, there's a risk versus reward there. And uh, you feel like you know the line with, with some experience, but you, you always want to back check. And I was wondering about the lines here today, because we've seen a couple of different ones look like at different times they've been working. Are you preferring top or bottom? Yeah, the, the cars have a really good balance with, with this car, uh, the Gen 6 car and the rules package they have, where at the front side, it's about the speed, uh, front side of a run, and the back side of a run, as the tires wear off and the, the fuel wears down, they really start to get into a handling situation. So uh, understanding that, uh, you know, changes the lanes that are preferred. Okay, so far it looks like uh, no charges to his fellow drivers here by Brad Keselowski for dings so far. on the two. So far. <laughs> Dave, I've been around you when you walked around the rental car, and uh, no, no dings so far this weekend. Ryan Blaney hanging out here, and uh, this is Talladega, right? It's sunny here on Pitt Road, Ryan. And uh, we wait for the track to dry over in turns one and two. So how's the race gone for you so far? How's the energy of the pack? How would you describe that? Yeah, it's, that's what you get when you get a two and a half mile racetrack, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Gorgeous on one end and bad in the other. But um, yeah, I think the flow of the race has gone kind of normal, right? Um, you know, we, it was nice. We got some stage points uh, in our Maytag Menards Ford Mustang um, in stage one. I think our cars are pretty fast. I think me and Joey and Brad and Kevin have all worked pretty well together. Um, and I think our cars are, are got pace in them to where we can pull the lane pretty well. So. It's just all about timing runs and things like that and trying to keep your nose clean. So uh, hopefully it clears up. I think it will. Sun will help it dry out pretty quick. Um, we'll get back racing. I won't use the word surprise, but are you impressed with how well the Fords have worked together? I mean, you guys have been pretty lockstep with each other. I mean, that's I think that's what we do so well. I mean, I think all the Fords do really good at finding each other and uh, especially, you know, Team Penske and the 21 car. And then, you know, like I said, the other Fords, we all look for each other, too. And that's that's what it's all about try to help each other out because there's strength in numbers at these tracks and uh, I think we're doing a really good job right now. You just got to uh, keep it up. So when you get a halftime break like this, do you kind of reevaluate what happened at the beginning of the race and maybe say, here's what we can maybe do moving forward in terms of runs and how you build them to make passes? Yeah, maybe a little bit. Um, you know, with the rain here, you know, where that kind of that caution fell here and everyone coming back and taking fuel, you know, go talk to Todd about you know, when we're thinking of coming or, or kind of what the weather's looking like or just just everything. So I just got to get some more information. Um, and, yeah, think about, you know, some runs. And I didn't probably jump in a lane or two that I should have. Um, so just kind of reassess those and make it better.
Parker, it's a sunny halftime here at Talladega. Guys taking a break and kind of reevaluating the first part of this race. Right, Marty. It feels like the uh, Team Penske mid-race update here. So let's get the third driver of that Team Penske trio, Joey Logano. What's the update? I was up. You're the highest runner of the Team Penske cars. It's like a halftime right now. Yeah. You're able to, to go back to the locker room and talk about uh, what your car is doing and, uh, and, and strategy and you don't usually get a second to, to kind of regroup and see what we got and go back out on the field. So, uh, Shell Penzo Mustang's got speed, it's fast, it handles good. Um, you know, it's all our teammates, all the Fords, we seem to be working really well together, uh, you know, as well as you, you can possibly hope, right? I mean, there's just some runs you can't stop, other, you know, uh, you know manufacturers and teammates will, will gang up, but uh, I feel like we're all doing our part. You know, we got good stage points there in the, in the first stage, which is very important. Um, hopefully we can do that again. Um, a lot of variables still moving around, especially up in the clouds. Well, one thing I saw you guys do that was really cool was basically push the four car around the track. Do you think you could do that a whole lap? Um, I, I, I would if I could. <laughs> so, so, I want to. <laughs> well, guys, there you got it. He will use it if he can. We'll see. What if I could? So maybe that's foreshadowing as to what we might see at the end of this race. Penske has been so successful, especially here at Talladega Super Speedway. If you look at some of the numbers that they have been able to put up, and you know the 10 Cup Series wins here at Talladega, all in the last 19 races, uh, nine wins, in the last 14 Talladega races, the last four, five, in the last seven uh, playoff races, they have been able to get out front. But there's the numbers of these three drivers: uh, Brad Keselowski, Joey Logano, Ryan Blaney, six, three, and two for. Uh, the three of them, so an impressive resume from this one organization that has had great success here. And right now, all three in the top five. The E NASCAR Coca Cola iRacing Series finale, October 12th from Texas Motor Speedway. A champion will be crowned. The champion, Rick, 100,000 bucks if you can be the champion. One race remains, four drivers with a chance to win the championship. You can watch on enascar.com. October 12th, 9 p.m. Eastern. Yeah, we saw how emotional uh, those drivers 
got, uh, especially the champion a year ago when he won $100,000. And uh, quite a big deal uh, for all of those drivers, a part of that. As these drivers have now been told, climb back in your car because the track is almost dry in turns one and two. And we'll be ready for them to fire the engines back up and get back on the racetrack. One of the things that really helps us in situations like this is the heat in the track that the drivers and the cars have put in there in that first stage really accelerates. When you have a quick shower like this, that track dries really quick. And they've just about got it finished over there. A little bit of water right up against the wall. Drivers, by the time they climb in, get buckled in and get off pit road and make a pace lap or two, we'll be ready to go. Interesting opportunity here. We talk a lot about how the drivers and teams are trying to work together. Well, here's a chance for the drivers to get out and have a conversation about it. Hey, what's working for you? What's not working for you? And what can we do better, right? And this is something you don't normally get a chance to do. And this is the track where it will benefit you the most. So who took this time to do it better? We saw all the Penske guys get together and have a conversation. Like, this is an opportunity to take what you've learned and apply it for the next of the race. I wonder if in that conversation Brad said, y'all are hitting me too hard. Because <laughs> they sent him up the track a couple times. That one save on the back straightaway, once you pointed it out, Jeff, that was incredible. Usually we see cars turned right into the fence when that happens. And, of course, this is the middle race of the round of 12. And so playoff drivers looking for every point they can get. Logano, Kozlowski, Harvick, Blaney, Elliott, and Bowman all got points, stage points, at the end of stage one. And as we discuss that, let's take a look at the Cup Series playoff leaderboard presented by Xfinity. Denny Hamlin with the win a week ago at Vegas. He's locked in. He's going to move on to the round of eight. Everybody else is fighting for points. And you look at a driver like Kyle Larson, who coming in was comfortably up in second as far as the point standings were concerned, but then involved in an incident, now only 20 points above that cut line. The good news for Kyle Larson is he's currently 39th in the running order in today's race, so if he can continue and make repairs, they will try to score some extra points and maybe get up there, or somebody else could falter, but let's not forget, this round ends, I was going to say a week from today, but that was yesterday, six days from today at the Roval at the road course, and then we go Texas, Kansas, Martinsville, and then the championship race in Phoenix. And when you see those playoff points, guys that did not score points in that first round, William Byron, one of them, who would have loved to have been way up in the top 10 there to finish around one. And even Chase Elliott right now just plus 11 for the cut line. No points in that first stage, so he'll be working hard to try to remedy that. And after that first stage, you also wonder what mindset that puts Christopher Bell, Alex Bowman, like, you know, what kind of mindset does that put them in? Are they starting to get closer and closer to, I got to win? I mean, is that, you know, after that one first stage and weather in the area here, does that create a, a sense of panic almost for these guys? Like, you know, it's going to be really hard next week. Are oh, we going to need to win a race? This is our best shot. Yeah, I think if they're sitting in the same situation, plus 30 or more, behind the cut line after stage two and those last 30 laps. They really just got to go for it and start taking a ton of risks to put themselves in a situation where they can win, Parker. Well, guys, as we get to talk to some of these drivers on this red flag, I just had an interesting conversation with Martin Truex Jr., obviously in a Toyota, and he said, you know, I got shuffled out there at the end of stage one, and the reason being, he said, no one will push a Toyota. We got no help out here. He thinks some of these teams are told not to even push Toyota, and he said even when they do, they get very squirrely. He said it's been really hard to get the help. And as we talked about all these manufacturers and these teams and the alliances they have and how they're working together, it's really frustrating being in one of those Toyotas right now. He felt getting shuffled out at the end of that stage and having to really fight tooth and nail just to stay in the pack. And that is, Dale, as you know, that can be very tough. When you feel like you don't have friends, this racing can be very frustrating. Yeah, and usually if it's like that in the first stage or the first part of the race, it continues on to the very end. And in the end's when you really, really need that help. And then you don't have the confidence to make the moves that'll win the race for you because you're not sure you're going to get that help. Engines are fired back up. They are finishing up uh, with the drying process in turn one and two. We'll be right back for the restart here at Talladega.
about to get back underway with stage two from Talladega Super Speedway, the Yellowwood 500 for the NASCAR Cup Series playoffs. And you see the pace car starting to roll now. The field will roll right along with them. Kyle Busch there just getting the window net tightened back up for him. Maybe having some kind of a problem getting the window net hooked up. As the cars begin to roll, Dave. Rick Fellow, Toyota driver, but not in playoff driver. Bubba Wallace is in 17th position now. We've seen him running up front so far today. We expect to see him there again. And under this caution, a little bit of levity from his crew chief, Booty Barker. Hey, Big Ed, sneak over there and put fuel in it. Nobody will see you. You're very inconspicuous. <laughs> Big Ed is Big Ed Watkins, the fueler. That's Booty Barker, who's been his crew chief now for Bubba Wallace for a couple of weeks. And Bubba told us this week on a Zoom call just how much he's appreciated um, Barker's ability to keep the room light. Yes, this is a serious business, but when he walks into the room, Bubba said, everything brightens up. And that's just another example of how Booty keeps the team together doing this. He also brings up the point that we're looking at a fuel situation to the end of this stage. And we have to see some more top-offs here, guys. And you think they can make it? Well, I think with 46 to go, coming around to 45 to go, this is inside the fuel window now. The question is, you know, who comes? We saw a couple teams pit two or three times under the last pace lap. So, you know, do they think they have enough? Is this a chance for them to leapfrog and get a little bit of uh, track position, Marty? Steve talking to drivers before they climb back in the car. The number one thing they talked about is what are we racing to? Is it going to be the complete race, 188 laps, or is it going to be the halfway? And halfway is not the end of stage two today. It's only 20 laps away at lap 94. That is halfway you see on the bottom of your screen. So I expect the intensity to pick up. It's on a lot of drivers' minds with weather in the area. This could be a race for only 20 more laps. So I think things are going to get pretty aggressive on the racetrack. When I look at this radar right here, most of the real heavy weather is south of the racetrack. So I think we're going to see lap 188. But, you know, the playoff drivers can't guess wrong. Now, the rest of the drivers in the field, they can ride around patiently and, and see these playoff guys take each other out. That again, the pressure, the anxiety that comes along with being a part of the playoffs right now, the 12 drivers. Uh, the one that doesn't have as much anxiety is the 11 of Denny Hamlin. He's already. Uh, with his win at Vegas a week ago, advanced to the round of eight. Yeah, Denny was about to come to pit road, but pit road is closed right now. Made a evasive move, but get back up on the racetrack before the commitment cone. There you see the commitment cone right before that little yellow pad on the asphalt. And he's like, oh, get back up here. I expect that road to be a busy place when it opens. You said it, Jeff and Junior, you know, it was just a week ago that that kind of all went down at Las Vegas where a fuel window kind of derailed the efforts for the Hendrick Motorsports cars. So I think it's already on everyone's mind, but then with that happening, uh, it's it's an, a moment and a mistake you don't want to make the second week in a row. Saw that crew uh, tires up on the wall too. Is that something that we're talking about topping off, but somebody might throw a set of tires on here as well? Well, so many guys are on different strategies with two and four. We may cop off right. again, William. It'll be really quick. There's some radio sound like top of the 24. Um, you know, maybe drivers and crew chiefs think we can take four tires right here and kind of reset the day. Steve, what concerns me about pit road is how many times have we seen near misses today on pit road? And if one wants to come on pit road to put fuel in, it's probably going to be a lot. So we're going to see a lot of cars on pit road at the same time. Crew chiefs and spotters are going to have to be on their toes right here to prevent having impacts with each other. Remember, this is rain. Well, the caution was extended because of rain, but this all started with uh, we had a little bit of an accident at the trial level before the end of stage one, and then that led to Kyle Larson having a tire issue. All right, we're going to come here. See, yeah, already. Pace car is going to be a lonely guy here, I think, coming through the trial. <laughs> Cody Ware in the 51 leading the field onto pit road. Parker. 
And right behind him is Giuliano. This should be a quick splash and goes. You see the fueler put it in there right now, and he's away, Dave. Same thing for Brad Keselowski. Team Penske on and off of pit road with just fuel. Marty? Yep, Kevin Harvick met with Greg Zipidelli, who's filling in for Rodney Childers this week. They made this plan to come down top off like everybody else, including Ryan Blaney. However, Denny Ham on the very first stall on pit road. You're going to see him come in as he tries to make his way to a stall cleanly. They're going to take on just fuel only. They had debated on tires, but fuel only for Hamlin as well. That's interesting because Joey Logano, one of the first on pit road, his pit stalls at the front of pit road, or actually at the back of pit road, but he was able to come back out of his stall and it was right beside the 11 of Denny Hamlin. So Denny Hamlin had to make a choice. He's either going to have to speed up a little bit to try to get from him or slow down to let him go by. And obviously slowing down was the wiser choice. Uh, let him clear so he was able to get into his stall. Getting ready for the restart. They'll line back up again as they come back to the start finish line and get the one to go. Felipe. Yeah, it just looked like right there that they turned the, there lights, the pace car off. Yep. Yeah. Coming off of turn two. So a unique set of circumstances there while the rest of the field is going to try to catch up here and get organized and get lined up. So this is coming to the green. They may have to extend this because I don't know if the drivers are capable of getting themselves in the position. Listen to the two audio here. If we were leading, we'd be one lap short. So save us some while we're riding here. So if we were leading, meaning if you had to run wide open all the way around the racetrack, we would be one lap short. So back in the pack, you don't have to run wide open. You can lift off the throttle, and the draft will help pull you up to the other cars in front of you. So just telling you, hey, man, got to save a little fuel here. Still got quite a bit of the field trying to organize back there and get, it sit, get themselves in position. Front row. So there wasn't an opportunity for them to do that. Looks like everything's going to work out, though. A couple new guys on the front row. We don't see at the front of these cup races. Justin Haley and Coyle Joy. Pace car will make its way onto pit road, leaving the field now in the hands of Haley and LaJoy. They make up row one. Logano and Blaney as well as Kozlowski, three Penske drivers, all right there in third, fourth, and fifth. Back up through the gears they go. are to pushing Haley. Just saw Blaney move down into the low line, but he's three or four cars behind his teammates. Before they join the middle there, they jump to his outside. Left him hanging all by himself. Here comes a little bit of help. Oh, he ducks to the bottom. You know, you, you talked about Justin Haley out front. I think they've seen him win enough Xfinity races where I think they trust him. And I think that they feel like he's a good plate racer and they can trust him. I think the trust is there, but it's the speed in that car there. Once that outside line starts to come up here, Brad's probably going to jump in front of that 17 car. I'm surprised that he's not doing that right here. To try to take the momentum that that 17 car, Chris Buescher on the outside has to go to the front. He can make that move right now. He's a little worried about hanging his teammate Joey Logano out. But Even Joey doesn't take that advantage and that opportunity, and that's the, what's what I'm worried about. I'm not sure that Haley's car has quite enough pace, and that outside line is going to go right by with the help of Christopher Bell. The 20 pushes Chris Busher clear off a of turn two. Now, now Christopher Bell jumps down to the inside. Sorry there, Rick. It's Busher that's jumped down to the inside as Bell now leading that outside line. We'll see if that keeps the momentum up and that slow line or the inside line begins to slow. 
as Bell who needs as many points as he can possibly get so he doesn't have to go to the Roval in a must win situation trying to get out front here at Talladega Dave. Rick Christopher told us this week that he has a hard time getting people to go with him and follow him when he makes these moves in a very fast red and black number 20. Well during the red flag period I talked with Christopher and said you just get shuffled out. He goes no I was making moves and no one would come with me. So now Christopher Bell leading. We'll see if the train will follow him if they'll trust him to lead here at Talladega. Big stack up there in that middle line. Oh the 17 gets a little upset Chris Buescher there. All those guys are really checked up behind him. All bailing to that top line to go around. And look how it's hurt. See that bright yellow car of, Day of Blaney. He lost a lot of spots. But up front, the 11 of Denny Hamlin, he's picked up about 14 spots at the restart. Some going forward, some going back. Oh, they're starting to try to get in that outside lane. Toyota driver update on Christopher Bell started this race in 12 has been all the way back to 26 right now he is leading and by doing that as you look on the left side of the screen to Christopher Bell leader that puts him above that cut line. Now with all these drivers very close on fuel running the top like this will allow them a little bit of time out of the gas I would imagine other than Christopher Bell everybody else probably finds a little bit of time for part throttle. And as they move up toward the wall, we want to get through the field presented by DoorDash. We'll start with you, Dave. And we'll go back to Christopher Bell, who told us this week when he watched his video to see what to do during these races, he wants to see who won the stage or the race and where they were three or four laps before that. What moves did they make? How did they get there? And if I had a bad stage, what did I do wrong? So those things he's marked down. And again, if he can get people to go with him, he feels like he's got enough knowledge to win this race, Marty. Well, Dave Rodney Childers has said, I feel like the super speedways is the strength of our program right now for Kevin Harvick and our team. And they're showing it right now. Harvick has been up front all day long. Got stage points in stage one. Remember, he came in below the cut line. He needs those stage points. He got them. Denny Hamlin's whole philosophy, we've talked about it. They won in Las Vegas last week. They're in to the round of eight, but they want more playoff points. They've almost earned double the amount of playoff points of any team in the playoffs. Hamlin sitting right now in third. And the same thing for Alex Bowman sitting back there in fourth in position to gain points once again. Greg I said we have to stay aggressive all day long and get those stage points right now doing what he needs to do, Parker. Right, right behind him, Ryan Priest. We know who does not have a ride with that 37 car going away next year, running in the fifth place. And we love to see this at Super Speedways. Who's gonna be that car that maybe we don't suspect that's gonna show themselves to be up front and have an opportunity to put themselves in the right position as we rumble towards that halfway point in this race that could make it official with the rain looming all around us. See that organiza organization at the bottom line, starting to make a little headway. Eric Jones dove down in front of Cole Custer, and now Cole is pushing the 43 car of Eric Jones toward the front, and all these guys in the top see it. Get Christopher down, get him down. Denny Hamlin telling him, get Christopher Bell down in front of me. Too late, Christopher's too late, doesn't make the move. Denny Hamlin to the front, he saw it in his mirror. I gave a warning. <laughs> he saw that happening, and that's such a smart plate racer right there, is to understand exactly what's getting ready to happen in the next, the next lap or two, the next corner or two. You watch that inside line form, you're up in the outside line, you got it, you wait till it gets to you, jump down in front of it, just like Eric Jones did, just like Denny Hamlin did. Now they're up front controlling the bottom line. All right, now let's see if the outside line can fight back. Now that the inside line's caught them, now this outside line can side draft a little bit. Harvick with a big push on Bell into turn three. See Bowman trying to hang on. They split the front up. So Denny Hamlin's out there all by himself. What's he going to do? Is he going to jump up in front of Bell? Nope, he wants the bottom. And maybe leaving that spot in front of him if Bell could get there, but he's not going to be able to. Marty. Rick, what a move for Denny Hamlin. That's trust in your spotter as well. Chris Lambert and Denny Hamlin have worked together for a long time. They've won Daytona 500s, and he also knew on that bottom line was Eric Jones, his former teammate. He trusts him as well. So, Junior, talk about that, the trust you have to have in your spotter. When he says go low, you got to shoot down there. Yeah, Denny saw that coming. He's got nothing to lose. You know, he can make these kind of moves without worrying about losing a lot of track position, losing stage points. He doesn't need stage points. 
So he can take every risk he wants. Little bump there out of the four of Kevin Harvick to get that high line moving again. You won't miss a thing. Go NASCAR nonstop. Today's aerial coverage brought to you by Geico. You look down and you see how huge of a lead and a push that the four of Kevin Harvick got now. Which line does he decide upon? Listen in to the four spotter. Here they come, half back, two lanes. 48's coming to you, just keep him there, keep him there. Here comes your push, 20's inside, 48's with you. You're clear, 48's not. You're clear, 48's not. You're clear, you're both clear, you're both clear. Whatever you need, 48's pushing. You guys are clear by two to the rest of them. Clear all the way to the bottom. You're going to try bringing it down. Levis pushing at 22 back. Your both are clear down. Clear down. You can block their run. He's off you. You're clear low. 48's coming with. He's clear. Uh, he got 20 inside of him now. 20's by himself. He'll be come on the run inside. You're still clear. Clear, clear, clear. 48's going to have the big push, though. Here he comes. 48's your bumper. You're both clear. Both here clear. You got the 48. Tim Fidua giving the information to Kevin Harvick there. Big move. Back in the back by Martin Schreger Jr. 47, 47, 48 to you. He's going to try to get 11, a third line going. To get to you. Still inside 11. Two by two, 48's half off you. All two by two out back, still inside. Inside. And before it gets too late. Lap if you can do it here. Is the intensity picking up because of the dark clouds that they're looking at in turns one and two? Well, three laps is race will be official. So these drivers now know that, you know, any move they make could be the end of the race. If we get the rain, the radar is kind of broken up, but it's been popping up. So I expect to see all 188 laps, but I'm not sure all these drivers out here agree. They don't really have a choice but to race like it could rain any second, because it literally could. The, the, the pop-up showers are forming 
out of nowhere. So the drivers are kind of aware of that. Teams are aware of that. That's why we're seeing these guys race so hard. Look at Mark Trex Jr. on the outside line. Great push from Ryan Priest. Pretty hard push out of the 47 of Ricky Stenhouse Jr. on the back of the 48 of Alex Bowman. Got Bowman a little squirrely. A little bit too big lead here for the 20 car. Both these lines are going to come at him pretty quickly. Denny's going to have to be boxed in here and committed to the back of the 20. Heart rate 143 for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. That outside line organized pretty close. Look at Reddick in the back of the 37. That's going to send the 37 to the 19. Harvick's thinking about going up there to slow it down. Not quite sure if that's what he wants to do or not. Now they all draw even. Then he's right at the back of this 20 car. He's going to push him clear. I tell you, I'm really impressed with that four car. He has a lot of speed. Look at the push on that outside line. Harvick up to block it. Oh, man, that means they're going to all have to lift. And you wonder, oh, the 37, that's what you worry about. When somebody goes up and blocks a line, the rest of these guys in the back of that line are pushing third, fourth, and fifth car, don't know the block is happening. And you get hard pushes that upset cars and cause crashes. Look at these two guys out front, though, Denny Hamlin. Sending his teammate in a 20 car way out front. They're going to come disconnected. A little tandem right there, something we might see a lot of later in this race. Look what that block from Harvick did, though. It completely took the energy away from that third lane. They all had to lift to keep from wrecking, and then it just completely killed the speed, and now that third lane is falling to the back. Bell out front has help from the 11 of Hamlin. Then it's Harvick. Back there on the inside line, Eric Jones running in the fourth spot on that inside line. Keep a watch at this tandem right here. Denny Hamlin is doing something, learning something for later. How long can that car tandem? What does the temperatures do? How quickly will it cool back off to get back to the back bumper of that 20 car in tandem again? It's 48, a big run on the outside. Alex Bowman being pushed by Stenhouse Jr. We just saw Brett Dalton, the flagman, give the crossed flags indicator to the field, meaning that's halfway. This race is official. Uh, if it were to rain or something happen, they have crossed the halfway point. They're all running down this five car of Kyle Larson. He's going to run low. It's going to force everybody off the bottom of the racetrack. Could upset the draft a little bit, giving advantage to one line or the other. A little bit of three wide there. Four wide momentarily with the lap car. Always a little nerve wracking. It's a great example of how much wider this track is than Daytona. Four wide at Daytona, man. You are inches apart here. There's enough room. Still the intensity, the energy building on that inside and second line. On the 47, really aggressive in the back bumper of Alex Bowman in the 48 on the outside. He's got speed and momentum, side drafts the 20, moves away. As we look at organizations fighting for positions, you have Joe Gibbs Racing with Christopher Bell on the inside, Alex Bowman and Hendrick Motorsports on the outside. Things picking up for Ricky Stenhouse Jr. as well, 155 beats per minute. Me as well. My heart rate is going up as we show those high shots going down the backstretch. The corners aren't as bad. The cars seem loaded, have a pretty good plan, but when they come down the backstretch or even through the front travel, just so much dancing back and forth, Marty, it's only going to take one little misstep to create a big accident. Boy, look at that heart rate in the middle of this pack for Ricky Stenhouse Jr., 154 beats per minute. That's like you on the Stairmaster, isn't it, Steve? But Stenhouse hanging in there with a terrific run. He has been in the top five this entire stage, and the Sunny D onboard shows us what that view is like from the front of the pack. And remember this week, big week for Stenhouse. Got a contract renewal with JTG Darty Racing. His birthday was just the other day. Stenhouse would love to cap it off with a win at Talladega, his second. Two by two for the lead and on back. Top two separating themselves. And which one will edge out in front? Now the help coming on that outside line. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is going to give the 48 a shove. Oh, look at that mess behind three and four wide. They all got stacked up. Chastain in that green car jumped to the outside, made it three wide. 
don't think he really wanted to be there. I think he had to go there and run in the back of somebody. They're all starting to get confident and push each other in the corner. Look at him. Then he upsets the 20 car off of turn two. All of them jumped out of throttle when they saw that for a second. Big wiggle out of Christopher Bell. Oh, oh up in the wall. Alex Bowman into the wall. Ross Chastain caught up in the 42. Sure the 19 is. of Mark Trex Jr. also involved. Try to keep it rolling. Try to keep the 18, Bush. Kyle Busch also spinning. Right before this happened, the 18, 14 points above the cutoff we'll line. Nice work the 19, here. only two points above the cutoff line. Junior, you just talked about the confidence going up with the pushing. It seemed like the runs were coming and there was more contact, and then finally too much contact, and the 48 gets turned down the backstretch. Tyler Reddick involved as well. We have seen this so many times. Somebody up front getting turned, and right there we saw it again where the guy fighting for the lead in Alex Bowman gets turned into the wall. Down the back stretch. They all got out of the gas because the 20 got loose off of two. Then uh, creates a huge gap and a big run. And the, and the 47, I mean, it's just a, it's the same bump that he did multiple times before. And that time, it just turns the 48 into the outside wall. The 19 doesn't look like he had contact. Man. Big hit for Alex Bowman. That'll put him in a huge hole. And Ricky's thinking, man, I've, I've been pushing him multiple times just like that. There's true back seat. He was trying to get slowed down. It's right on the roof of the 47 car. One lap, plus one. Oh, see, the minute he, hit, he made contact, then it shot the 47 to the left, and now he's in the right rear quarter panel. It just slings him off to the right. And these guys have nowhere to go. Wonder how much damage is on Truex car. Kyle Busch. Huge point implications. Here we go right here. Let's go right along on the Stay Shot camera. I think that Chase Elliott gets into the back of the 47 Stenhouse down the back straightaway and moves him forward before he gets into Alex Bowen right here. And now I think the Stenhouse is going faster. Boom, right there, and then he hits him. So it was. It was a combination of all of that. They were all bump drafting together. Here you go, a better shot. Watch the nine car chase Elliott. Gets in the back of Stenhouse, that moves him forward. Now here comes Stenhouse, almost to the back. Boom, Boom. another shot, and there goes the 48 of Bowman. Everybody trying to push each other because it's going to make you go faster, but just the timing of it got off. It's going a little bit quicker than Alex Bowman could handle. They're connected on the top again. Big one. Crash behind you. Crash behind you. Uh, you know, we always want to say, well, whose fault was it? You know, it, sometimes racing happens. And here at Talladega, I don't know what Stenhouse could have done different. I don't know what Alex Bowman could have done different. I don't know Chase Elliott should have done anything different. You have to push each other. It just was bad timing. Junior, that onboard of Chase Elliott, when he was pushing the 47 so much, you could see the deck lid and the tail separate. Like the yellow, there would become a black line there. I mean, that has some big shots moving that 47 down the backstretch. But we've continued to see it all day. I think that's what you have to do. Let's take a look again here, Junior on board with the nine. And look, when he hits right above the word Sunny D, look at that. I mean, it literally flexes the tail from the thing. I mean, that is a big shot for Ricky Stenhouse. That momentum has to go somewhere. And one of the important things for the spotter of the nine car in that situation, Chase Elliott can't see the 48 car. He does not know how close the 47 is to the 48. He doesn't know when the 47 is going to get to the bumper of the 48. The spotter of the nine has to say, hey, if you're going to push him, all right, you're a car, he's a car, he's a car length away. He's half a car length away. He's there. That's time for the nine to stop pushing. They have to have that communication going on. But all the things that happened off of turn two where the 20 got loose sort of created a gap and then a huge run that I don't think anybody was prepared for. And then it's just proximity, right? Once you have a car spinning, especially off the front of the field, I think we should be perhaps surprised more cars got yeah. through than yeah. the ones that actually got caught up into it. Listen in on Chase Elliott's audio. 
Did I push him too hard, the, the 47 here? I don't, I didn't feel like I was pushing him very hard to cause that, but yeah, I felt like I was just barely, barely kind of pushing him. And then all of a sudden he was, you know, sideways up one ahead. So that tells me exactly what you said, Dale. Like, so Chase is saying, I wasn't hitting him that hard. I wasn't worried about moving the 47. I just don't know if he was aware the 47 was coming to a car in front of him. So he might not have been pushing as hard as the 47 slows down at the same time, and you kind of get that bumper car reaction. Dave, Kyle Busch fans could see the 18 car bottom part of the replays there squashed four wide. And so Kyle got a lot of damage here on the left rear, which is where they're going to work on it. Well, as he was going back down the backstretch, he said, man, it is smoking hard in here. They said, so don't blow a tire and make it even worse. The big thing they wanted to check on that left side was to make sure the crush panels aren't pushed down on where the tire would go or be exposed to where the tire would be up in that wheel well so that you ruin the next Goodyear tire. So they'll cut away some things here, see if they can get Kyle back out there. Remember, he had a decent points cushion coming in here. They'll try to repair him, stay on the clock, and get him back. Just got to be careful here, Rick. You can't add parts back in it. So cut as much as you need, but no extra. So the big one happens up front. Alex Bowman into the wall, collecting quite a few cars. NASCAR on NBCSN is brought to you by Ford, built Ford proud. Credit One Bank, the official credit card of NASCAR. Visit GoCreditOne.com. And by Monster Energy, unleash the beast. Well, it took a few moments, but finally, after uh, Ricky Sinhouse collected his breath, he was able to evaluate what happened in that wreck with the 9 and the 48. Here's what he had to say. Let the nine know we're all good with how he was doing it. I was good with the push uh, from the nine. It was all working well. Just every time I got to the 48, he was like all over the place when I got to his bumper. The nine just shoved me one last time there, and I got the 48 loose. So, Jeff, to your point a moment ago, situational is what happened right there. They know they have to push each other. They want to have that run. Just happened to put the 48 in the wall. 
Yeah, it was interesting. He said that 48 was all over the place. I don't think he was talking about him as a driver. He was talking about his car. His car was unstable moving around. And the more unstable the car is, when you push him, the easier chance it is to move him out of the way and ultimately wreck him. Remember the 47 Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is wearing that wearable root band. Well, look right here, 156 beats per minute. He's going to get a run. I'm excited to see if this heart rate goes up as it all goes sideways. That's the highest we've seen really all day long. 160 right here. Then he knows, you know, the wreck was behind him, but that activity strain over 11. Heart rate 160, Greg. I mean, yeah. that's. And it went 161 just as it was going off the screen there. So you know that uh, the intensity is picking up quite a bit, especially up front. Ricky Stenhouse Jr., who has had great success on super speedways, a win already here at Talladega. Uh, that heart rate went up as he was getting up toward the front, challenging for the lead. We see it live. It's dropped back down to 120, 121. As we're getting ready for the restart. Dave. A little more repair on Kyle Busch's race car. They believe they have the tire clearance on the left rear. One thing they were going to try to do the last time the 18 was down pit road was to see if it would take fuel to know if they couldn't on the next stop. They did not get a chance to do that because they didn't want to run off the clock. You see all of these cars involved. Playoff drivers Kyle Busch, Truex, Alex Bowman. One thing this does help is Kyle Larson currently four laps down. Uh, but still on the racetrack. They were able to repair that five car. Uh, so he's, you know, four laps down, and every other car that gets in an accident just helps him kind of save few, a few points for the day. Pace car off the track. Now it's Ricky Stenhouse Jr. on the outside, and Christopher Bell on the inside. They now lead the field here at Talladega. Green flag back in the air. Big push out of the nine of Chase Elliott. That outside line separating themselves, the top two. Now the inside line goes by. Always weird how it looks like two guys got it figured out. And they're going to drive right by the field. Then the other line organizes quickly in the next corner and goes by. So we're side by side down the back straight away. Three cars on the inside, two organized on the outside. So watch this 11 car. He's trying to push. He's doing a great job of pushing Christopher Bell, but watch right here. The 37 puts it right on his right rear quarter panel, pulls him right, right off, the 47 car rather. That's just a side draft. That side draft slowed Denny Hamlin down and pulled him off of the 20. Now they got a big run on the outside. We'll see what Ricky Stenhouse Jr. does now that he has cleared the field. The nine also, as well as the two, all three of those cars have cleared the inside line. Will they go down in front of it? As we watch the battling up front, the skies on off turns one and two have darkened up a little bit. The radar looks like another shower is coming in at lap 105. This race would be official. You see at the top of the screen that dark cloud this late in the day. I don't know if they would continue and the drivers are racing like it. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. out front. Elliott running second. Here comes the 20 of Bell once again. He's got help from Denny Hamlin. So surprising that Chase doesn't go down in front of that 20 car to take the momentum that they had on the inside line. More than likely would have cleared Chase into the lead. He stays with Stenhouse. They power back on the outside. Stenhouse back up front. Bubba Wallace trying to form a third lane. And Denny Hamlin, when he wants to, can just shove that 20 out there. And he's got the confidence, I think, to push the car through the corner. Not a lot of guys are doing that. Not a lot of guys have the experience. He almost turns the 20 into the outside wall. Little bobble there. When we talked to Christopher Bell earlier this week, he said, you know, I got a text message from Denny. He said, I'm willing to help. I'm willing to help my teammates, whatever we need to do. Christopher Bell coming in, he was at the bottom of the list, needing the most points to get out of the cellar in these playoff standings. Just keep your eye on that 20 car. He has made a comment on the radio that his car does not drive well with cars on the outside of him. So with Denny Hamlin pushing him, 
And also cars on the outside. That last three and four, he drove in the corner. He did not stay on the bottom. The car washed up the racetrack. He's going to have to be able to drive that car where he wants to. Look at this big run right here. Will the nine clear the 20? Very close to doing that. I think this help from the two is going to clear the nine car, but he's going to stay with Stenhouse in that top line. Really impressed with this bottom line, doing as well as they are. They're not quite close together. Look at that outside line, all bumper to bumper. But this inside line with Denny Hamlin aggressively pushing this 20 car is keeping up. Now Wallace, that third lane on the outside, he's starting to make that work. He sure is. And that's going to slow down that, in, that middle line. That middle line is going to have side drafts on both sides of the car. Inside line driving back more and more. Do they stay in the middle? Where do these two and now three cars go? Big push on the inside coming, Denny Hamlin. Big push on the outside. Insane. Look at the run Bubba Wallace has now on the high side. A big shove from Kurt Busch. Bell also clearing the 11 of Denny Hamlin. Look, Bubba's going to drop down in his hole. Kurt Busch now leading that outside line. Really tight on the outside line. Mark Trex Jr. pushing cut for Kurt Busch. There's Matt DiBenedetto in that 21 car. He's been riding around in the back all day. Now it's time to try to get a finish. He's up at the front. Now Kurt is going to just block whichever line he thinks best. Whichever line has the momentum. They all have it. So what are you going to do, Kurt? He's going to stay on the bottom right here. Guys, how about the car that's leading the outside line? Martin Trucks Jr. He was just involved in the accident, and he's outside on this high line, now being blocked by the one of Kurt Busch. And there once again, the two cars, the 20 and the 11, surge ahead of the pack. Again, Denny Hamlin with a tandem draft down the back straightaway clears him and the 20 car. Problem is that right there, they get overran quickly by the pack when the pack catches them. Kurt went to the top. Kevin Harvick followed him. Now he's got Stenhouse Jr. behind him pushing him. Great racing here at Talladega. You're not going to miss a thing. We go NASCAR nonstop.
under eight laps to go in stage two of the Yellowwood 500 from Talladega Super Speedway. Now it's Kurt Busch and the 23 of Bubba Wallace fighting it out for the lead. Rick, the moves are getting bolder. The intensity picking up on pit road. Why? Listen on the radio. Rain will be here before the end of the stage. Rain will be here before. So what happens first? Eight to go in stage two. The rain or the end of the stage. This could be for the win. Now it's just seven to go. Bubba Wallace in front of Kurt Busch. Joey Logano almost wrecked on the front straightaway there a few seconds ago. Big save. Everybody had to lift. Look at it. Separated everybody. Look at the activity strain out of Joey Logano. 16. That's out of a 1 to 21 scale. His heart rate, 148. Logano, the second car on that outside line. Kurt Busch. 47 and 24 is on the tandem. Kurt Busch will be teammates. He's got two cars clear to the top. 37 and 17 is Some non existent up there right today. now. It broke apart, room in front of Brad. Will he stay cemented right there we'll behind this 23 front. car? Trying to keep this inside line going. Trying to keep themselves organized. Only six to go in stage two. A little bit of movement on that outside line. Here comes the two of Keselowski. He's been strong all day. The cell's on top of us. Now they're talking rain. Oh, no. That only makes his intensity raise even more. He just, what the driver just got told right there is this thing's going to end any second. The cell's right on top of us. This could be for the race win. Do what you got to do. Bubba Wallace, big Good block. Rain drops here, a little bit of rain. Huge block from the 23 car to the top. Covering that outside line. What does Brad Kozlowski do? He's going to continue to push the 23. They're getting out pretty far. That's a pretty big lead. The 22 of Logano is going to have a huge run here. What does Bubba Wallace do now? Under in five mine, laps to mine, go. Here comes the 22, 22 of Logano. Logano to the outside. Bubba doesn't know what to do. The outside line's going to have some momentum here. Both lines coming back to the back bumper of the 23. Here comes Logano. What does Bubba Wallace do right here? Is he going to make this block? Is he going to stay in the bottom lane? Right now, he doesn't have to make a decision, but he's getting ready to. Here comes a big push for Logano. Oh, oh around goes crash. the 37. Priest is around. He catches the 24 as well as the 21. Caution comes out. And fire coming out of the back of the 24 of William Byron. William Byron has had so much speed in these playoffs, but just things have not gone his way. Senator switch on. See the flames continue to roll out from. Right front's knocked off of it, man. Behind the 24. You know. Yeah, I'm on fire. Window net down. You see William Byron rapidly getting out of that car as the AMR safety crew immediately to him. So now William Byron, his teammate Alex Bowman, both going to the roll next week, most likely in a must win situation. Take a look at what happens with Ryan Priest in the 37. He's going to get a push down the back straight away from the 17 car. A lot of cars lock bumpers, and he just turns him right. He gets into the back of the 22. This car moves a little bit left, and it spins him back to the right. Almost the same situation we saw in the wreck before. A big push from behind. Then they get together. Right here, he gets into the back of Logano. And now he's still getting pushed from Busher, and around he goes. You know, Busher just can't judge when to quit pushing because you can't see, you don't know that Priest is up against the car in front of him. It's a great shot of it right here. Right there, they make contact, and there's Busher still pushing, and around Priest goes. Had to Benedetto in this wreck also. Yeah, 21 to 24, nowhere to go at the back of the pack. Chase Elliott was back there as well. He sees it coming. He's able to get slowed down and go to the bottom of the racetrack. So much cleanup that's going to take place from what happened here. This stage is going to end under caution. We got rain drops. 
on the windshield of the booth. Hey, folks, think about what could happen here. Bubba Wallace in front of this field. We're at a very large racetrack. We know from yesterday it takes about two hours to dry the track if it's completely lost. And sunset is at 630. If all of these things happen, Bubba Wallace could get his first ever Cup Series win at Talladega. Well, before, let's listen to Bubba Wallace and his team when they're talking about. Rain like hell, baby, come on. Oh, it's pouring over here, pouring, pouring. Pouring, it's dark, can't see anything, whatever you need. You know, the difference this time, guys, the last time it rained, it rained in one and two. Just in one and two, but right now it looks like it's raining all the way around the racetrack. Again, we mentioned that the halfway point, it became official uh, if for some reason they weren't able to continue on with the race. Already now 117 laps complete. The rain coming down a little bit harder. Bubba Wallace has worked his tail off to get out front of the field. I think the one question that I would have uh, if I was a playoff driver right now, and this is to Latart possibly to help out, is, is does this end the stage? Are they going to run to the end of the stage? Will we get to pit road before the end of the stage? How will they award these stage points to these playoff drivers if we're not able to complete the laps? So right now the race would be official if this race didn't continue. So I expect the cars to come down pit road, be stopped under red condition. That is now the running order. That is how the cars are scored. And if this race is called and your car inside the top 10, you will receive the race points and stage two points. So that top five run for Brad Keselowski, Joe Logano, Christopher Bell in fifth, that's like a double whammy. I mean, fifth, Christopher Bell's gonna get his bucket full from stage two without even needing to see the finish of it and get the end of the race. So this sprint to the finish that ended up in an accident, very vital for these playoff cars. The intensity was picking up on the racetrack. They knew that the possibility of rain was out there. Now the field, who has been put in line based upon the loops when the caution came out, that's the way they would line them up. They will be brought down onto pit road now and stopped, and we will see how long the rain is going to be here and how long it would take to dry this racetrack to get it restarted before darkness tonight. We saw the radar, and this doesn't look like a small pop-up cell. This is built into something rather large, a couple miles long. There Booty Bark, we saw Booty up there on top of the pit box, and normally he's pretty laid back. But we're seeing him move forward and back a little bit, like he's a little anxious a little about what might energy. happen. Yeah, I don't blame him. I need nerves too. Well, what a day it would be for Bubba Wallace and Booty Barker. That's Booty right there. TV, I can see you. Breathe. <laughs> Breathe. That's no stress, though. And that was Bubba. He was looking at the big screen. Well, you talk about the hard work Bubba Wallace put in. That bottom was kind of moving with Christopher Bell and uh, Danny Hamlin. And then we saw Kurt Busch get into it. And then working that third line, Bubba Wallace, then moved down to the middle. I didn't think that was where he wanted to be. He absolutely knew what he was doing because you see right here, yeah, rain, <laughs> rain some Come on, rain. He has a couple seconds in his career. And taking this, you know, listen, he took this ride for Danny Hamlin and Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, this 2311 racing, and brought some big partners on board. You see McDonald's, DoorDash on his uniform, and been working hard at the craft. And it's not been a smooth year. It's been up and down. There have been times where he's been frustrated with the speed. They haven't quite had some of the handling at some of the tracks. Always has been a very good restricted plate racer. He's proved again today. And an influential person in this sport. Uh, Bubba Wallace, an African-American driver, the last African-American driver to win a race at the highest level, Wendell Scott. This could be just the second ever in NASCAR history. This situation he's in right now, raining. You're sitting there thinking, okay, can they get it started again? You want to believe they can't, right? But until you hear them say it, you don't believe it. And you're hoping it rains. Just keep raining, man. Just keep raining. Don't give them a chance to drive this racetrack. And it's a nervous time. We've seen Bubba Wallace uh, grab a football in under rain delays. And He'll go throw the football up into the crowd and just have a little bit of fun. 
Think about the winners in this, uh, you know, this weekend. The Truck Series race, the Xfinity race, first timers, Brandon Brown, yep. Tate, Fogelman, Tate Fogelman, and possibly another first time winner in the Cup Series. I mean, this racetrack has such a unique history uh, of producing Cinderella stories. Amazing first-time winners. Bubba Wallace, a couple years ago, finished second in the Daytona 500. And when he went in for the media uh, to talk to him in the media center, he got very emotional because his mother was in there, uh, his family was in there, and he knew that that was almost a win for him. At the, at the time, the organization he was running for, he thought this is a, an incredible finish. I can't imagine what the emotions will be if this race becomes official and Bubba Wallace gets his first ever Cup Series win. He's trying his hardest not to let himself think about that right yeah. now, you know, because it's it's easy to do when you're in this situation. Man, what if it rains? We got the win. I've been in that situation where they drive the track, you go back racing. And you can't allow yourself to feel like it got taken away from you. You just have to hang in there and wait this out, Marty. Let's chat with him. How the nerves, Bubba? I don't want to talk. Oh, I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm a big believer in, um, you know, when you get like a, a tire vibration or you feel something go wrong, I'm a big believer in don't talk about it, it won't happen. And so I want it to rain. I want that to happen. But as far as it being official, I'm not going to talk about it. We, we still got a lot of laps left. So um, super proud of everybody on this uh, McDonald's Toyota Camry. Um, we've, been, we've been a decent plate racer. And I told my team I want to be one of those good plate racers uh, this, this go around. And uh, Freddie did a hell of a job up on the roof to get us this far. Um, appreciate Brad there pushing us. Um, I, uh, me and Ryan played uh, ping pong with Joey and Tom, his dad, last night, and uh, they beat us, and so I owe him some money if we do win. So how are the nerves right now? Are you calm inside? Yeah, no, it takes a lot for me to get excited, so I'm good. <laughs> All right, Bubba Wallace saying it takes a lot for him to get excited, and now the waiting begins. Jeff, I seem to remember a young man named Jeff Burton trying to win the Southern 500 in the same exact position as Bubba Wallace right now. Marty, and I can promise you, once they give you that trophy, it's yours. It doesn't matter if it rained or not. It, it's yours. You're the winner. So, yeah, it, it is a nerve-wracking time. I loved his approach, though. He's going to race until they tell him it's over. He's not ready to, you know, he would love to win this race, but he's going to go talk to Denny Hamlin. They're going to continue to see if this thing restarts what we have to do. Um, uh, you know, you have to continue to keep battling. So right here is a great replay. You see the wreck behind the 23 of Bubba Wallace clearly ahead by a good margin. This, once again, we went through this yesterday, so this is to the loop lines. We aren't using cameras. NASCAR sees the last loop line passed by lead lap cars under green. That's where the cars will be store, scored. And I think it's pretty clear that Bubba Wallace was far ahead. Chase Elliott, he's like, I'm gonna get to congratulate him early, because I think I look at the sky and it's pouring down rain at a place that's 2.66 miles around. It's taken multiple hours to dry it in the past, and here we are closing in on three o'clock local time. Yeah. We know sunset here is 6.30. Uh, Ryan Blaney, very good friends with Bubba Wallace. You just saw Chase Elliott come over. Very good friends with Bubba Wallace. Uh, and, and guys, I want to I want to look back at a year ago uh, when the entire garage rallied around Bubba Wallace here at this racetrack. They pushed his car to the front. They walked with him. They stood with him. Again, it was a racial slander uh, in the garage that Bubba Wallace was glad to have the entire garage surround him and support him. The King was there with him, Richard Petty. And now Bubba Wallace is waiting. The potential for his first ever win right now in the hands of the weather. Alabama native. I mean, if you're going to win, why not win in your home state, right? I mean, that's the whole idea is, is uh, it's just so tough. This sport, Junior, Jeff, you guys both know. I mean, it's so hard to win races at this level. 
uh, and it's so up and down, right? There's way more downs than up. I mean, a lot more losses than wins, regardless of how good your season is. Oh, yeah. I mean, you take them however you get them. What, you know, I think if Bubba is declared the winner, I think you look back at those last several laps that he, you know, all the work he did to get himself in that position, and you'd be proud of that. Man, I've worked hard. I, I made these right moves. When the, when the rains came, I was the one leading the race. Uh, whether it's fuel mileage, hey, we, we, we did the work. We put the work in to put ourselves in position to win that race. However it happens, you take a lot of pride in it. And the trophy matters just as much as any other, especially your first win. Especially, Junior, in this situation, the entire field was talking about rain. The entire field was talking about it. Just, you know, we, we got to go. It's going to rain. It's right on top of us. And so everybody had to make a move. They all knew they were potentially racing to the end. It wasn't like Bubba was out there and all of a sudden it started raining. They all knew it was coming, and they all started building a strategy of how to get to the front. And Bubba did it best, did it better than the rest. I mentioned we showed that uh, we all stand with Bubba, or I stand with Bubba in the grass. That was, it was a garage pole that was tied in such a manner that uh, obviously didn't look good. Uh, everyone was rallying around Bubba uh, at Talladega here. And now once again, it seems as though uh, the entire field is rallying around Bubba here uh, for potentially his first win. Well, it reminded me, I was thinking his Toyota teammate standing behind him and then it, it you know, landed. Well, it's also his his car. Danny Hamlin has an opportunity right. to go to victory lane as a team owner. You know, this is, um, takes a big gamble. I don't care if Michael Jordan is your team partner or your co-owner. A huge gamble to start a race team. Denny Hamlin has taken that gamble, gambled on Bubba Wallace. This would be a big day for both Bubba Wallace, Denny Hamlin, 23-11 racing. Yeah, they carry a lot of momentum into the offseason with the addition of Kurt Busch to that team next year, and they're building a program that they want to be proud of. And to, to leap this season as winners, uh, it'd be a massive difference in the organization, just the whole temperature and the culture in the garage. And, and the other thing uh, that comes into play, this was a one-car team this year. It's going to be a two-car team next year. When everyone was asking them, what are your goals for this year? Well, Michael Jordan immediately said, well, I, I want to win. You know, we want to be a team that can win. And Denny stepped back and said, you know what? We want to we want to improve from week to week to week. And I think we've seen Bubba Wallace especially improve on the super speedways. He's already finished second uh, at a super speedway earlier this year. Now the possibility exists uh, as he's holding the umbrella for Denny uh, that he could get his first win and this organization could get a win. Well, I can tell you what Bubba Wallace doesn't want to see right now is the that. <laughs> that right there. He does not want to see jet dryers on the track. NASCAR is going to try everything they can to get this race in. It's still raining right now, though. I don't know that you can't run these jet dryers when it's still raining, but they are positioned, ready to roll. Yeah, it's just a situation just like yesterday where they had to call the race. It felt super early to have to make that call, but they just didn't have to, uh, enough time and, and daylight to complete the entire race. NASCAR knows about what it'll take to finish this one, how much time they have. And they'll know when they need to get this track dry, need to get it started to be able to finish the event. The heaviest rain right now is on the south side of the track, which is in turns one and two. It continues to rain there. We're under a red flag condition. Bubba Wallace out front here at Talladega.
more than just saying that I'm just old. But I have been at this place since 1983. And I don't remember, and, and I don't have the greatest memory of all, but I don't remember any three different first-time drivers that were first at Talladega, much less any other track. It was rather phenomenal. And actually, it amps, it amps you up for what we're anticipating here with Hank Stump. I don't know. I'm excited about it. Let's see what happens. The rain's still coming down here at Talladega, Alabama, and Talladega Super Speedway. Under a red flag condition, the cars have all been brought down to pit road. We look at what happened with Alex Bowman here earlier in the race. Look how close the 23 is to this right there. He's able to clear the back bumper of the 48. He goes through unscathed, and now he sits in front of the field here at Talladega waiting out the rain. And just moments ago, Parker caught up with Alex Bowman. Alex Bowman was at the front of the field when he was turned by the 47, Ricky Stenhouse. What did you feel inside the car? Was the bump just too aggressive there? Yeah, I just dumped over on the left rear and turned us around real bad. So, bummer for the Ally 48 team. Uh, obviously, had a fast car. We we're leading there, and um, that's just super speedway racing, the box that we're put in by these racetracks. So, um, you'll have that. Bum to have a torn up race car, but. Uh, Move on, go try to win the Roval. You're in a must-win position now to be able to advance in the playoffs. What kind of does that alleviate some pressure? Make it simple. You got to go out there and win. And you think you can get it done? I feel like you know we were pretty buried anyway, and everybody's going to run pretty good. So it was a must-run really well situation anyway. So it doesn't really change much. We go every week to win, so uh, we'll go do our best to make that happen. Obviously, I was Bowen disappointed getting wrecked here at Taldega. Take a look at the cup playoff standings presented by Xfinity, and you hear the cars roaring around the racetrack during that interview. I've had to give a, a few of those, and there's no more disappointment in a driver when you're standing there and you hear the rest of the field continue the race. That is pretty brutal. Equally brutal, 51 points below the cut line right now for Alex Bowman. Uh, Byron also below the cut line by 43 points. And let's hear from Byron. Parker's with William Byron released from the infield care center here at Talladega. Involved in that wreck with the 37, Ryan Priest. He was coming down the track. You just have nowhere to go? Yeah, I don't know. It, he was just um, coming down the track, and I was kind of trying to run a third lane and uh, just part of Talladega. So go to the Roval and, and uh, try to win that one and, and advance that way. You also had your teammate Alex Bowman who got knocked out there into turn three. You're both now basically in a must-win position. How do you tackle next week? How do you go into that mentally? Uh, just like we did at Bristol, I think try to do the best we can. We we tried to win last week and it didn't work out and try to win today. It didn't work out, but um, but yeah, we'll do approach it like we do every week. And thanks to Exalta, Chevrolet, uh, everybody back at the shop, you know, we will have a, a really fast car for the Roval. So just got to go perform there. William Byron, a must win position to head to the Roval. Maybe some nervous energy being expended by Bubba Wallace. Such and the rain still coming down. Such a huge deal to win a cup race. It's so hard. Bubba Wallace has been under the microscope. You mentioned it earlier. You know, some pretty unrealistic expectations put on this team at the beginning of the year. You know, we're going to go win, right? And Denny Hamlin kept trying to calm everybody down. Look, we got to learn. We got to get better throughout the year, but a lot of expectations put on this team and this driver. And Booty Barker, that crew chief we see right there on top of the pit box, just added as a crew chief to this team, was in within the organization, but moved to the crew chief position. Used to crew chief in the garage before, has had a lot of great success, very well liked, very well respected, and I think that he's still got a little bit left. I think that his position now as a crew chief of this car will see a change or an improvement possibly in the performance of that car going forward. He works really hard at all the details. South Boston Speedway native right there. Got his teeth there. South Boston, man. We'll be right back with more from Talladega.
This place can't chew you up and spit you out in a hurry. Everybody's four or five wide. You know something crazy's gonna happen. Up and into the air! That was probably the longest flip I've ever had. Didn't know if it ever stopped. Legato is upside down! He'll slam back into the racetrack! Ambridge goes up in the air! Nearly half the field eaten alive! So much craziness at this racetrack, and if we're able to get the track dry uh, and the cars back out there, there are still 71 laps remaining in this race, the Yellowwood 500 from Talladega Super Speedway. But right now, the jet dryers, Air Titan still waiting. Corey LaJoy is already in his street clothes as he's waiting out this uh, delay. Corey LaJoy figures if they choose to dry it, he's going to have at least a couple hours yeah. to get his suit back on. So, Marty. Kind of cold down here, Rick. It is uh, number one, still raining, but the fans who are in the stands have been cheering Bubba. He's been sitting there listening to their cheers as well. He and Danny, Danny Hamlin looked at a radar for a moment, and now they're kind of sitting or standing about uh, six, eight feet apart. Bubba with a little bit of nervous energy. You saw him go talk to Kip Childers in the pace car a moment ago. So he's kind of pacing and waiting, but it's neat to see these Talladega fans cheering on Bubba. In fact, one of them a moment ago said, Bubba, Bubba, let it rain, let it rain. He said, trust me, I'm praying for the same thing, my friend. It's over 57 years since an African-American has won in NASCAR at the highest level. Wendell Scott did it back in 1963. Uh, the Scott family, has been very supportive of Bubba throughout his entire career. Well, it's been uh, anything but smooth. I don't think ta any Talladega race is completely smooth. It started with this big accident on the back stretch. Bowman turned in the outside wall and look right there. The 23 of Bubba Wall sneaks by that accident, keeping the fenders intact, and then found his way to the front and was clearly leading with this accident. The 37 of Priest gets spun around. Collects Byron and Maddie D. That makes Bubba Wallace the leader. And then under that caution, the reins came. We heard from the crews the possibility existed that the rain was going to come even before the end of the stage. Dave. Checking back on the Booty Barker story, crew chief for Bubba Wallace. He's never won a cup race as a crew chief, so this would be a big first for him. And let's look back to why the change was made just two races ago to put him in charge of the road crew here. Uh, Mike Wheeler was the crew chief. Well, he's in charge of a lot of things at 2311 Racing, and they wanted him to move fully into the competition director position because they're adding a second car next year. Mike's got a lot of people to hire. And when we talked to Bubba about Booty Barker and Mike working together, he said, I think it's the best of their personalities and skills. Mike is very buttoned up and uh, works very hard at the specifics and details of the place. Booty is a guy who lights up every room he comes into, and he keeps me calm. We've known Bubba is a very laid-back, fun-loving kind of guy. And I believe I have even more fun if he's declared the winner. Booty Barker helps keep that mood right for this driver. Yeah, Dave, in that conversation, it was really interesting how Bubba said that the personality match helped him, that he just wants to go and have fun, right? Go to the race and just have fun. Doesn't always want to be in a strategic meeting. Doesn't want to make it, you know, about 
processes. He wants to go and just drive the race car, and he feels like Booty allows him to do that, just puts him in a little better place, thinks they're both really good people and hard workers and can do what they need to do. It feels like Wheels will do a great job getting the team ready for next year, but just likes the personality of Booty. You hear it in the background, the Air Titans, Jet Dryers, they have fired up, they're rolling. That means the rain has stopped enough that they want to try to get this track dry. And the meat of the rain, the, the heart of the rain was down on the south side of this track. So they might not have to go the entire length of this 2.66 mile racetrack to get it completely dry, but they do have to focus a lot in turns one and two from the tri-oval all the way through one and two. Uh, there is a lot of precipitation on this track. So we'll see how the progress goes here. And again, the radar, this the cell that popped up and hit the track, uh, it's on the south side of this track. There it is again. Uh, the possibility exists of more rain. It could be coming, but right now it's lightened up enough that they have put the jet dryers and the air titans out on the track. So they're going to work to see if they can get the track dry to restart this race here at Talladega. Track drying is underway under red flag condition here at Talladega Super Speedway. There were three laps to go in stage two. There's still 71 laps remaining in this race. And you see the Air Titans working diligently to try to get the track dry once again. The race is going to be against potential uh, future rain as well as darkness, uh, which is an issue here at Talladega. Uh, sunset around 630 currently. It is coming up on 315 local time. It takes, if the entire track needed to be dry, uh, it takes about two hours, maybe a little over two hours to dry this track. Uh, the one thing that might speed this process up a little bit is that it's so big, it didn't rain over the entire track, at least as hard as it did in turns one and two. Now standing by with Joey Logano, who's currently third day. That's right, Rick. If it uh, was called now, he would finish third, and that would be a decent day for you. What was the energy like there in the pack as we were coming toward the rain? Uh, crazy. As soon as they said uh, we're close to halfway and there's weather in the area, <laughs> you might as well call the five to go in the race because it just got intense. A lot of push and shoving. Uh, my spotter's yelling. There's five or six cars all locked on bumpers in front of me. <laughs> this is a bad spot to be. I was not in the right spot and uh, was able to, to move up, get to the top lane, um, and get Brad in front of me there and start pushing him. We gained a lot of spots there and able to, to kind of uh, get in a good spot. I had Ryan Priest behind me, so uh, the Silver City crew from the quarter midget days is back together. That was pretty neat. And, uh, you know, was able to, to get towards the front and thought we had a shot at getting the lead there even. So um, we'll see what ends up happening here. I, I thought it rained enough that they would pull the plug on this thing, but we'll have to wait and see. Well, as you can see, we're standing here without umbrellas now. What do you make of the 20 and the 11 almost being able to pull off that old tandem push? Were you seeing that too? And were you able to do the same thing as with your Mustang? Um, I could see it. I, I, the 
moment I was a little too far back. It just made me nervous where I was. <laughs> usually uh, if that happens too much, a, a car gets turned in front of the whole field and it causes the, the big crashes that we see. So, um, you know, we were able to kind of, I guess everyone stay safe and do the right things. It seemed like uh, you know, the 11 and the 20, the 11 was pretty uh, disciplined by pushing the 20, trying to get him in for points. So kind of obviously see what was going on there. Yep. Um, you know, so, you know, we all had to do what we had to do to, to try to, you know, get to the lead and, and you know, just as importantly as one of us winning, sometimes to make sure someone else doesn't win is a, is a big piece as well. And if you finish third, what will that mean for your team, Joey? I don't know where that puts us in points. I actually think we're second. Um, not, oh, I'm, I'm looking I, at I my believe, monitor, yeah. Uh, I know your monitor says that, but I think they, okay. they changed that before we came to pit road. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Um, I think it gives a ton of points either way, whether it's third or we're second. It's a lot of points uh, in the next week. I don't know where that puts us over the cut line, but that would be mission accomplished for what we were trying to do today. Do Bucket that. of points here is always good, guys. Yep. With Ryan Priest here outside the infield care center. And Ryan, you were in a great position there with the rain looming. It looked like the intensity was picking up. You're about the second car in the top lane. What happened there when you got turned? Uh, we were trying to pull the razzle dazzle and it didn't quite work out, did it? But um, I mean, that's that's what you're going to end up with this type of race. And the 17 was trying to push me and I was trying to push the 22 and it just it. it I mean, we were up there. That's all we can say. So thank you, Kroger. Thank you, Velveeta. That's it for Super Speedway Racing. And I know this was such a huge opportunity for you. You're looking for an opportunity for next year to drive and continue driving here in yeah. NASCAR. What would it have meant to get a good run here? And how, is that, was that sort of your thinking there, just putting it up front and not All caring? All I was thinking about was winning. <clears throat> That's what I say over and over again, and you know that. Um, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a modified Xfinity truck, late model, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll go and win in it. So just getting that opportunity is the next thing. Ryan Priest looked for that opportunity. He was giving it a good run today. So the track drying continues here from Talladega. You see it's getting a little bit darker. Uh, the crowd, cloud cover uh, over especially the south half of this track. The Air Titans working. But the one thing uh, is if we can pull the radar back up on the screen. Uh, the one thing that could hurt this drying process is a cell building just to the southwest of this track. And if it gets here and dumps more rain on this track. That just eliminates all the work that these Air Titans have done and the progress that they've gained. And still out front of the field under this red flag condition, Bubba Wallace looking for his first ever win, potentially coming here at Talladega.
under a red flag condition here at Talladega Super Speedway. The track and NASCAR are doing all they can to get this track dry from a shower that passed through the area, uh, hit the north side of the racetrack uh, just a little bit. Uh, that's where these guys are headed right now. The south side, it hit it pretty hard, and so a lot of precipitation and moisture that they are trying to get cleared off this track to get it restarted. There's still 71 laps to go in this race. Uh, another driver uh, out of the car we'd love to chat with is Matt DiBenedetto. Parker's with him. Matt DiBenedetto here released from the infield care center at Talladega. I know how excited you were coming to this race. This is a huge opportunity. Where were you placed there right before that wreck? Do you think you were in a good spot for the end of this race? <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, I was excited coming in. Not now, but it's, it is what it is. We um, went up there early, led some. And we're feeling our car out, had good speed. It was good as always, man. The quick lane Mustang, Wood Brothers always bring really fast race cars to here. So wanted to, uh, you know, feel it out. And then we committed to after that. And we got shuffled a little just riding. And we were committed to that before the day started. Um, use leverage the situation to our advantage that we don't need stage points. So we were going to cruise, let the wrecks happen, stage three, go, try and run up front and then go for the win. But Mother Nature threw a little kink in our plans here. And obviously, we see what, see what happened. How aggressive was the racing out there? Oh. It was nuts. It was, it was, uh, we were on borrowed time for sure. But when um, the weather obviously became a factor and everyone was communicating it to all the drivers, you saw it just instantly pick up and everyone was, was on full blast mode there at the end. And, and we didn't have the track position. So um, since we were committed to riding, then we had to go and just not the right uh, situation. It was a circumstance. Mother Nature threw the big kink in our plan, but. Um, Another fast car. We've got some good races left. We've been on a roll. Our team's been doing awesome, man. So we're going to take that momentum and try to snag a win. Glad you're all right. Thanks. So as the jet dryers and crew working on the back stretch uh, and into turn three and four, it's starting to rain again in turns one and two. So that cell that we had mentioned uh, was on the south side of the racetrack is starting to hit that part of the track and you're seeing rain come down now as well here Marty and I can tell you it's starting to rain on pit road as well Rick and uh, it's interesting because I think when the jet dryers and the air Titans fired up Bubba Wallace who was at the front of pit road said that's enough for me I'm gonna go talk to my guys on the pit box but it's been interesting we've seen Chase Elliott Chase Briscoe Ryan Blaney Corey LaJoy and Kurt Busch all come by to say in essence congratulations and every time they want to say congratulations to Bubba he says I don't want any part of it there's his uh, future teammate Kurt Busch coming by to say hello to him and he shuts him down immediately they start to say congratulations he goes nope not done yet not official yet so Bubba does not want to hear about a potential win until it's official from NASCAR he's pretty close to his 28th birthday uh, 27 years old 11 months, 26 days, <laughs> the Mobile, Alabama native uh, trying not to jinx it. Uh, but the rain starting up again in turns one and two. NASCAR, the track trying to do everything they can to get this track dry.
watching the 2311 team wait out this rain uh, and NASCAR's decision if they are going to continue to work on the racetrack. Again, the rain coming down a little bit harder now. Uh, and once again, it takes quite a while to dry this racetrack. So uh, patiently waiting if you can. Bubba Wallace, when the caution came out, was in front of the field. The rain started then right away. Yes. 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 History made once again. It's official. Bubba Wallace gets his first career win. He's just the second African American to ever win at the highest level of NASCAR. Over 50 years ago, Wendell Scott was the first. Bubba Wallace now officially the winner at Talladega. Getting your first win, such an amazing feeling. Worked so hard to get here. It's really a lifetime spent learning this skill as a young man. Get a chance to do it on the biggest stage and then get a win. It's just an amazing feeling. Well, we've seen this whole weekend uh, be a weekend of first time winners and dreams realized, and none bigger than winning a cup race. The highest level stock car racing. And he's worked hard to put himself in position to get to this level. And now he can call himself a winner. He'll be able to take the hardware home with him. Yeah, you mentioned the hard work. Under so much scrutiny, you drive for Michael Jordan. It puts a lot of eyes on your race team, a brand new race team. Expectations were set. It's been an up and down season. There's Chase Briscoe coming in, congratulating his friend Bubba Wallace. It was an impressive drive. It was not an easy day. Missed a couple accidents. The whole field, new rain was coming. You saw the intensity get turned up. And Bubba continued to find kind of traction in that outside lane, worked his way all the way to the front of the field. He's making that same walk that we saw a year ago when the entire garage showed its solidarity behind Bubba. And now I think he's going to get his car. Changing he's, pace. He's, yeah, he wanted, I think he wanted to be by the car. First time winners, man. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a life changing moment. Uh, and there's been a lot of life changing moments for Bubba. He was engaged to his longtime girlfriend, Amanda, uh, during our Olympic break. Now he gets his first ever win at the Cup Series. Bubba Wallace winning at Talladega. Marty. Rick, yeah, he was walking to the car because he wanted to have a moment of climbing out of his car, in essence, as a winner. Congratulations to you. But I want to know what emotions you were thinking of. Tears immediately when you found out what emotions were going through your mind as you were waiting for an official announcement from NASCAR. <laughs> Part of me is, you know, sitting there waiting, you know, it's not over with, you know, um, just sit there, bide our time. If we go back racing, that's fine. Let's put ourselves in position. But he had so many cool fans behind us at the pit box just cheering for it to rain so it kind of amped up the intensity a little bit but man just so proud of of uh everybody at 2311 new team coming in getting a win late in the season reminds me of uh kind of 2013 waited so long to get that first truck win um i know a lot of history was made today i believe uh which is really cool but it's about my guys it's about our team it's about what we've done appreciate michael jordan appreciate denny for believing in me giving an opportunity um like we talked it's pretty fitting that it comes here at talladega I want to know what it means to you, the second African-American, first since Wendell Scott, to get to victory lane at this level. Yeah, I never, uh, I never think about those things. And when you, when you say it like that, it <laughs> it's obviously brings a lot of emotion, a lot of joy to my family, fans, uh, friends. It's pretty damn cool. So just proud to be a winner in the Cup Series. The significance of doing it here, it's almost appropriate, isn't it, Bubba? You told me last year here, a low point for you to get the first win here, significant? Yeah, for sure. You know, um, this is all those kids out there that 
want to have an opportunity uh, and whatever they want to achieve and be the best at what they want to do. And you're going to go through a lot of bullshit. Um, but you always got to stick true to your, your, your path and, and not let the, the nonsense get to you. And uh, stay strong, stay humble, stay hungry. Uh, there's been plenty of times where I wanted to give up. And you surround yourself with the right people. And it's moments like this that you appreciate. Bubba, there's a lot of people in this garage area and a lot of people around the world that are very proud of you right now. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, Bubba Woo! Wallace. The emotion, his friend Ryan Blaney coming in with a water bath there. And you can hear the emotion in his voice. And you saw it in his tears as well, Rick. I don't want to drop back <laughs> Big hug out of Ryan. There's Denny, friend and co-owner of the team that Bubba drives for with Michael Jordan. He, he and Ryan Blaney are good friends, and been a lot of times after a Blaney win, they've celebrated that together. Well, tonight, Blaney gets to celebrate Bubba's win. And Bubba said before, he's like, it's going to be my turn. I know it's going to be my turn. I've been around these guys that have won. Uh, they've been able to get to victory lane. I know it's just a matter of time. Well, the time is now. Bubba Wallace officially a winner in the Cup Series. Not a part of the playoffs, but this win here, very sweet for the 23-11 team. Bubba Wallace. Going back to celebrate with his team once again. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it, Wendell Scott, the only other African American driver to win <laughs> at this level. And ironically, uh, symbolic handing of the trophy over to the Scott family happened earlier this year. At the time when Wendell Scott won the race, he wasn't given the trophy. Uh, it was that time in the country that uh, Wendell Scott uh, wasn't celebrated as the winner of the race. So much progress has been made, and now continuing to break through barriers. Bubba Wallace wins at the highest level of stock car racing, becoming just the second African-American driver to be able to do it. And his phone is lighting up. I'm sure that he's probably already heard from Michael Jordan. Uh, his family, as I mentioned, Amanda, his fiance. He'll spend two or three days answering hundreds of text messages. I can assure you his career, so interesting. Racing the k &N series for Gibbs. Racing the truck series for Kyle Busch. Roush racing, Roush racing for the Xfinity series. And a lot of ups and downs, a lot of success, a lot of struggles. Eventually an opportunity opened up at Richard Petty Motorsports. And he had some great results in that car, filling in for Eric Almarola. And a lot of people took notice of his ability to possibly make it in this Cup Series through, I think, that opportunity. And he grounded out a few years at Richard Petty's, learning, struggling. Working through frustrations, waiting on somebody to give him another chance, at driving some equipment that could possibly take him to victory lane more often. And they're building something pretty special at 2311. Bubba's going to be a part of that going forward. I mentioned it earlier, Kurt Busch coming in off season. This team's going to continue to get stronger. And when you see a guy win it, his first race, he typically continues to win at that same track. Brad Keselowski won his first race here. Six-time winner at this racetrack. I won it in Texas. Every time I went there, I felt like I had an advantage. We mentioned Wendell Scott's family has been so supportive of Bubba Wallace, and Wendell Scott's grandson just tweeted, uh, Warwick Scott Sr., said, you can't swim standing on the bank. Wendell Scott, congratulations, Bubba Wallace. We salute you. What uh, two days it has been for Bubba Wallace. Uh, this race scheduled to run yesterday. 
uh, was postponed because of rain. And so now they ran the race. There were 117 laps complete. And when the caution came out, it was Bubba Wallace who was up front. The rains came. The rain's still coming down here at Talladega. And NASCAR knew it couldn't be restarted. It became official. Bubba Wallace, the winner at Talladega. The celebration will go for a long, long time.